crime scene. Okay. <laughs> Happy Monday, everybody. So, so, uh, hello. Yeah. Thank you for uh, uh, staying with us. We're starting a little bit late today. A little late. Fault. Just a little. No. No, it's my fault, too. I started it. Nope. I blame Tim Cook. Yeah, Tim Apple, really. Tim Apple. Really wasted all of our time. So I didn't. I, I got. I got right up to the TV thing. The the original content is it going to be exclusive on on the devices? Uh, they they really yeah. did not talk enough about the original stuff. Well, it will be it'll be on the devices, but Apple TV will now be available on Roku and Fire TV. Yeah. Okay. So is it going to be another subscription? Uh, for the original TV stuff, do we know? They, Presumably. Yeah, it looks like it, but they didn't talk anything about that. Their big thing on yep. TV was oh, what TV was the, Plus, uh, original, and Channels, which is this, them doing reseller stuff. Uh, yeah. What What about the uh, subscription for journalism? Uh, Apple News Plus, $10 a month, 30 magazines, plus the Wall Street Journal and the LA Times. So you, so I'm still going to get harangued by uh, New York Times and Washington Post and yeah. all that? All right. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no. They were, they were very. It, this was very deliberately magazine focused. Ah, Big on boo. magazines. <laughs> Get Wired and uh, Time and National Geographic. I mean, uh, that's already been a thing. When, when there a service like like four years ago announced that was like subscribe to all the magazines sure. on your iPad. Remember when I think it was Flipboard. Remember a subscription to magazine was like twelve bucks a year. Yeah, yeah. And so now, now I'm paying more than I paid in a year for subscriptions for things that I don't really in a format that's yeah better than I, the web, but not really. That was not my. Uh, I think the credit card thing is a smart idea. I think they're mm -hmm. smart to get into the credit card thing. Uh, TV interests me. You know, if they've got good content, I'm already in that ecosystem. It's gonna so be I great, Justin. More. It's gonna be great. <laughs> it's just I was watching it and thinking. Imagine if Netflix spent an hour bringing people out and not showing stuff when they had seven new shows. <laughs> exactly. A price Very well put. I watch this and I'm like, okay, you got a couple new shows. Cool. Yeah. Great. And then Oprah's doing two documentaries. It's, like, it was like a religious meeting. It's it was the, uh, like... I, it's I love other. Oprah, but it was like, we're, bring, yeah. we're bringing like a great presenter, you know, a voice for everybody. Voice this. But like, they better be... It's some better be some community fun YouTube thing because if you bring out a person after this, and it's Oprah, it's like I like Oprah, but that was that was like oh geez. It's the uh, it's the Captain Marvel of Apple announcements where it's like whatever you do, don't show anything, just tell everyone what happened off screen. Also, they're saying coming fall, <laughs> coming in the fall now. <laughs> oh, then why didn't they announce it when they're when there's? A, I mean, I guess now they'll release trailers and stuff, but. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, but but that's that's very much uh, look. Uh, Apple tends to be good at a very specific thing, uh, and that is surprising everybody and showing well, that, them what to be excited about. That's what they, you know. There was the, the the stuff. Did you guys see the thing about the live stream? Uh, like they put the live stream early, like earlier than they normally do, and they just had like weird stuff. Oh, on I did see that the live stream. Yeah. Like it was just random, but it was smart. It was like it was Apple kind of showing like. Oh look! Like when we really want to get people's attention, we can really get people's attention. Look at like this is a little viral thing. Get everybody talking online. Uh, and so I was like, okay, well, cool. They're gonna roll out a bunch of stuff, and if they're really smart, they'll be like, hey, the best series that we have is available right now. If you have any of these devices, go watch it. Uh, just to whet the appetite of like this is what this is gonna be like. Uh, I. But it was like this miniature of their theater. And it was just different stuff showing up on this screen, like s weird screen caps and stuff. Yeah, and that's fine. I mean, like, look, it, it's there to to just get people talking and get people thinking about the fact that there's going to be an announcement. But the fact that they did that leading into an announcement that was like, oh, we're going to be doing stuff eventually. I mean, Don't that worry. is the, the live stream starting way before is a clever <laughs> idea to build up. Oh, yeah, they're doing a live stream. I think that we'll see more people do that. Um, what, I, I, um, everything was like, oh, okay, nothing got me excited about the content. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, amazing stories. That was cool. You know, we'll see. I don't know what this, this kind of reminds me of your remake of Always, but you know, Spielberg, you know, but, um, I mean, like, like we live in a world now where your favorite show tomorrow 
you could not have heard of yesterday. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. You, you are always a friend's recommendation away. <sighs> the show's amazing. I need to tell the world about it. Uh, so it's like, we're going to do shows. Cool. <laughs> yeah. And it's, and it's also like all of the stuff that they talked, I, I think everything that they talked about on stage was stuff that they had already announced. We already knew, yeah. Yeah, even the Oprah stuff. Like, I maybe they yeah. had announced that, maybe not, but or it was leaked. Yeah. But, yeah, they, yeah, they have not announced anything, but but certainly we knew every inch of that. You know, we, no, we knew they had that. They they uh, I don't know. Announce is the right word, but there were enough releases about like, hey, here's our lineup of stuff. We have got Steven Spielberg. We've got all these people. Oh, 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 yes, yes, yes. In terms of the like announcing that they were working with them on on shows, although even then, I don't know whether or not that that was like that's just entertainment mm -hmm. journalism. That's like, oh, like Amblin's yeah. working with yeah. Them. Agents can't keep in a story to themselves. Uh, the uh, the other thing I don't know if you guys yeah, saw this. Wow, I'm shocked. I, I I thought for sure they were going to show trailers at the very least, or a teaser, or a supercut, or something like that. They like, had a montage at the end of. I think after Oprah or right before Oprah, but it was all like the, it, it was too short and it was, you couldn't, it was not enough. I don't know. Well, like the, the, we've, you know, there was that story months ago about how half their lineup was already done. Mm -hmm. Like it had already been shot. Like, and, and, uh, they were like, uh, obsessing about fussy little details on it. Like, yeah, we've been getting the horror stories of how difficult it's been to work with them. Sure. Yeah. So it's like, well, they, I mean, are they just, I don't know. That's that's crazy. I thought I thought for sure that they were making that big of a deal about it that and they and they put TV last cuz TV's going to have the stars mm -hmm. that the one rumor of like and guess what? It's out like, now. It's uh, either it's out now or uh buy your Apple devices because it's just going to show up. This is like the reward of having the, of using the TV app right. of, of us getting all these other channels and, and where this is how we're going to leverage our, our footprint into deals with the creators and the other companies that haven't made deals with this yet. I mean, is just going to pay the tax of sure. three or four original series a year that we're just going to flow through there. I mean, I get wanting to launch with a lot of stuff out of the gate, right? If the idea is they're going to be, licensing some stuff and originals on top of that i get it would be a better position for them to launch later in the year when they when people can go in and there's a wide spectrum of stuff but where like come on show me something i don't know uh well i can't believe we got to this point and the only attitude you're allowed to adopt that is pro apple is still the ongoing joke from cord killers which is it's going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be great. Like 11 fucking years we've been waiting. <laughs> it's going to be great, yeah. though. It's going to be great. Well, I guess the, the, the <laughs> Apple TV channels thing that they announced today is it's the thing Amazon's already doing, but it is part of the thing that they were. But I have an Apple TV. About. I don't have a Fire Stick, so I'm sure. glad that they're doing it. Like, you know, if you really oh. want to get, you know, epics or. Uh, I'm, I'm the I'm, other one. <laughs> the one, Stars. the one thing I think I I'm most in a Brit box interested. Like, yeah, I mean, Apple TV. It's like I don't. I've hypothetically heard behind the scenes from people who worked with a major technology company developing content, mm -hmm. and my enthusiasm is not very high because of what I've heard, what that process has been like and what the content ends up kind of being. I'm not saying it relates to anything here. Um, and it also doesn't feel very disruptive. It's a lot of, you know, they walk in with, hey, it's our, this is our name. And then it's I'm like, okay. Up. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, the, the Apple Arcade could be very interesting because anytime you come up with new ways for creators to get paid. Yeah. Or a big platform gets behind it. That's encouraging the idea that, you know, for indie games and indie developers and other people like that. I'm frustrated, though, with my existing Apple TV. I open up the game section. It's the same games that were there for, like, two years ago at launch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, are like, hot and new. Yeah, no, nobody's developing for us here. <laughs> but it, they made it sound like they were really getting into the publishing game and buying into into the development of these games so, yeah. so that more of these games can be on the TV. And, and well, the, the, the problem was is they... 
Apple likes to make things that work on everything, and then they're like, we want to have games for the Apple TV, but you can't make them have to depend upon a controller. Right, you have to also have remote based yeah. control great so if i want to port something over now i mean it, it it was just and i think that they thought that the opportunity to be on that platform would be so big and so huge people would be you know lining up to do it but the developers are like it's a wasteland yeah. right yeah. yeah well and 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 there's nothing scarier for a developer because it's such a high risk high reward category it's like to spend mm -hmm. 18 months to two years investing you know with with no money and it all comes to this one release it's like you've got to know that there are users lined up especially if if they're going to em emphasize being pro indie developer like that just makes the the jump all the more terrifying which means you better deliver yeah. people to buy my game when it comes out Apple has the money to to float a lot of these good games. And it seems like at the bottom of this page has a lot, like, A, there's a Lego game in, in this. Uh, but there there are some bigger companies attached to this. There's a Sonic game in here. Like, the new Sonic racing yeah. game is in here. Like, there's enough money to be thrown around to make this a, a, a good prospect for consumers. And and if they're, especially if they're focusing on indie games, then then that could be an easy business decision, possibly. Yeah. I mean, but also no price and no release date. So sure. it's going to be great. Cool. Coming in fall. Be great. <clears throat> it's uh, cool. Man, that's great. I mean, they're all going to be $10 a month, right? They got to be. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah. I, I like the credit card. Credit card's a great idea. Yeah. You know, the 2% the, the back everywhere... Uh, that, that that takes Apple Pay is great. Um, you know, I have I use the Amazon. Visa. <laughs> hey, hey, quick nod to the folks in the chat. BioCow trying to sneakily take over the Bit Boss position with <laughs> with one bit, and then and, and Wabbit Magic immediately disabusing him of of that notion. Just like that's not gonna happen. <laughs> uh, all hail the Bit Boss, JC Calhoun, the greatest <laughs> of our fans, our favorite fan. Well, now Wabbit Magic. Oh. oh, sorry, Psych. Uh, that, that was a hilarious early April Fool's prank I just did. It's my favorite Jape, uh, pretending I, I, like J.C. Calhoun's my favorite when really it's Wabbit Magic. I, uh, I, <laughs> I totally think that uh, uh, this is a good. Uh, it's a good play for Apple on that, but it's like uh, I don't know. It, just, just kidding. Like... Bio cow's the best. Go ahead. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, don't I, know. I I trust Apple like with credit card stuff. I trust their incentives there. Yeah, I mean as uh, much as I can trust any corporate entity, but you know. Although I will say that hey, thanks a uh, 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 snitching Apple uh, trying to uh, simplify where I'm buying things from. There are some businesses that work very very hard to create innocuous sounding credit card. <laughs> Well, the thing is, it only on your phone. Remember, all that's on your phone locally. It doesn't share. They don't. Nobody well, well, knows. What? What? Walk me through that. What's up? So, well, what? You know, let's say sometimes, uh, uh, you know, if we were out in Vegas and uh, all of a sudden we went to uh, a certain uh, uh, kind of establishment, uh, you don't want on your business card, you know, for it to show up as the Spearmint Rhino. So very often you find uh, 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 Las Vegas uh, Pool Supplies Inc. <laughs> But it doesn't. What it does is on the phone, when you pull up your phone to see where you spent your money, yeah, it only figures it out there. It doesn't report it to a central server. It oh, doesn't do I know, I know, I know. I know. I, well, I, I know I know your point. But what I'm saying is actually what's what's cool about this is the lengths to which Apple went to make sure like they basically they take those weird addresses and stuff like that and says, you know, Vegas pool supply and body wash is Spearmint Rhino. So you, when you're looking at it, you're like, Vegas pool supply? I've been robbed. And then you have that embarrassing phone call with the representative like, no, that's the Spearmint Rhino. And you're like, sure. oh, oh, you yeah. know. Well, I think he's oh, – yeah. and I think Justin's arguing the opposite, that if you are on – if your card is shared with you and your spouse – and you both have access to your transactions on the phone. Yes. Yes, and I understand that point. I'm saying <laughs> your transactions will still say Las Vegas Pool Supply. The problem mm -hmm. is if it says Las Vegas Pool Supply and you don't know because you forgot sure. that's who filled it, I mean, yes, then it's I get, really I embarrassing. Because you yeah. can pull your log, you pull out your phone and you'll go, oh, oh, no, honey. Yeah, I had to help some friend buy some chlorine. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. she pulls up. Hey, you know what's phone. awkward is when you pay a bookkeeper that you took to prom back in high school, and she does your 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 bookkeeping now. 
And then and then just she has to ask you, what uh, what's this? <laughs> oh. Really? Yeah. Yeah. She uh, uh we did we did like a friend prom date thing, but uh yeah. but but it's the sister of my best friend from high school at the time. But uh well, and for all she knows, you have a new pool. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I went to Las Vegas to buy it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the best chlorine. Well, hey, Bryce there. uses your card. Remember, it's Bryce. <laughs> yeah. All right. Any more Apple stuff before we actually do the show? No, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. I'm good. Okay. Go. Oh, Andrew's doing a trick. Right. Nice. Right. Sorry. Okay. Alrighty. Well, then uh, take it away, uh, Andrew. Well, I'm gonna let you take. <laughs> we all have our oh, gifts, oh, Bryce. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> We all have our gifts. <laughs> all, right. all right. Take it away in three, two. Hello, and welcome to the Weird Things Podcast. I'm Andrew Main, joined by Justin Robert Young. Hi. Brian Brushwood. Apple TV is going to be great. Mark my words. Mr. Bryce Castillo. Hey, everybody. Gentlemen, I'm going to jump right into a mystery with you all. Go. I want you to imagine that you have, I don't know, like a little work shed in your backyard, okay? On there, there's a bench. At night, maybe you work on projects. Brian, maybe you're designing the next puzzle box. Sure. Justin, maybe you're making, you know, porcelain clay wrestling figures. As I'm wont to do. Bryce, you are you're, you like to put together watches or something. Whatever. Oh, yeah. Big watch you have to, Yeah, watch Bryce the watchmaker. <laughs> You've, you've got your little tools and stuff and your little box you open up. You take your tools out during the day and you go work on it and fix things and make things. And then, you know, when you're, you're done, you just leave everything there, okay? You leave the shed, close the shed, take a lock, close the lock on the shed, go to bed. Wake up the next day, pull the key out, unlock the lock on the front of the shed, take it, put it on the hasp, open the door. Go inside. Now, you remember the night before when you were working on your project, your respective projects? Sure. Justin, I, you had – yeah. I mean, I only made it like halfway through the assembly. I only had like two of, two of the sides uh, built I mean, on the box. I, I I barely sculpted the bicep on my porcelain clay wrestling figure. <laughs> I'm did. still figuring out the 60 seconds thing. I don't <laughs> – uh, one day. Now, you look at the bench, and it's clean. I mean uh, – uh, You don't see your – did an errant wind blow through? Where's my stuff? You look at the box where you keep your tools, and you open it up, and there are all your tools back in the box and some little parts and stuff. I mean, this is not unlike what happens in my actual life. Uh, I usually attribute it to one of of three uh, magical creatures uh, named Bryce, John, and Brant. <laughs> and I now, just assume... understand only you have a key to the shed and you live it alone because it's just a sad turn of events, but we don't get into that. Okay. So uh, huh. Maybe you forgot. Next night you go work on your tools and you leave them out. You go leave the shed, lock the shed, go to bed, wake up next day, come back, unlock the shed, walk up to your bench. Same thing. Hmm. So 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 the 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 project remains, but the tools are put about, uh, put the away. Tools are everything. All the little parts, everything next to it, all the little parts and stuff are back in the box next to it. So, but uh, if the project itself is still there. I mean, if it's a little thing, it's everything that fits in the box is back in the box. Um, Your little figure is yeah, back so, in the box. So, so there, so there is nothing on the bench when I walk. No, back. nothing by nothing. That area is everything's back inside the box. All right is is this a is this a home workshop? Like I'm living alone, and this is at my yeah. home. Very alone, very lonely. All blind. right. In this scenario, do I currently have a prescription to Ambien? <laughs> <laughs> Because, by the way, we are still at the point where Brian is not shocked at all. Like, yeah. These are all the things yeah. that have definitely uh, continued to happen. Yeah. You did not have a subscription to a other subscription. Brian. A subscription. I like that. Ambient to plus. other Brian. Other Brian. Huh. Is a very, a very weak vacuum somehow manifesting itself inside no, but, my shed? Well, but, but, but uh, yeah, the real trick is that the tools end up where they belong, and, and which, which violates uh, one of Newtonian laws of, of physics, of thermodynamics. Yeah, the fourth law of tools. Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's always in the last place you look. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, it, is not, it is not tool time. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so that means 
there has to be an intelligent actor of some variety. Wait a minute. Uh, this is the Weird Things podcast. Uh, okay, I don't know how well trained snakes are. <laughs> Thank you for remembering, Brian. Uh, well, it's got to be a critter. It's got to be a trained critter. Hold on. What part of the world am I alone working on this thing in? England. England. Oh, damn it. So it can't be monkeys. Well, um, how would you? How would you try to solve this? I mean, I'm actively trying to solve it right now. Well, I mean, <laughs> what, what steps would you take, though? Uh, oh, oh, you know what? I would set a trap or a test. Maybe put up a camera. That would be the easy way. Yeah, you know what? I, w I would. I would set up a little drop cam. There you go. Okay. Well, okay. Now, now, there it's we go. interesting that we ah! have the solution. <laughs> of Watch <course>. this. <laughs> freeze it, freeze it, freeze it, freeze it's it. Paused. It's not, it's not playing. <laughs> okay. okay. So here's the bench. That's exactly what this guy did. Now, I want you to imagine this mystery in a world where you don't have drop cams. You don't have cameras and recorders. <sighs> so the 1980s, huh? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so it's in the 1980s. And by the way, this does look like a well-used work desk. Uh, it looks like we've got some kind of Tupperware bin or a, or a um, uh, maybe a cooler. But but the whole desk is covered. Uh, you know, you go to a machine shop or something, maybe maybe an auto parts yeah. local guy. Like, like there's every a, there's inch. A lot, there's a lot of bric-a-brac. Right. Are we going to take bets now on what we're going to see? It Well, in England, it won't be a monkey... Well, it not? I'm going monkey. I, 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 I'm going to go raccoon. I'm going to go raccoon. All right. Let's. Do, uh, wait, uh, no, quick, quick, quick. What is fact check? Uh, are there raccoons in England? There's got to be. There's got to be, right? They're, only, they're, only they're, they're more North civilized. Thing. Oh, maybe, maybe. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Steve, someone in the chat swear says no. Him, or swear, no, they're swear North American. Him. North American. Okay, so no. But assuming no raccoons, what yeah, would be your you second? Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm I'm gonna guess it's a raccoon abroad. I'm sticking with raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> he's getting he's getting with credit. Ricky Gervais. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys want to play back? Here? Oh wait, wait, wait. Oh. They're native range, but uh, they've been introduced in uh, parts of apparently I think Germany here. Oh, okay. So he hopped on a ship, uh, got his yeah. little his little raccoon passport out. Yeah, ready? Here we go. Let's see what happens. All right. So, oh my God, oh, it's oh, a rat! A mouse. We watched a little mouse jump out of a box, <laughs> and he's grabbing bits and he just grab a pocket knife. He just grabs a pocket knife. He is and shoved a. Po He's he, nice. he's doing like the reverse of the old TV show Supermarket Sweep. He's putting everything on the shelf where it goes <laughs> as yeah. fast as he can, man. It's oh like there's my. money on the line. What is going on? So this mouse, apparently what happens, some rodents, is they're used to clearing spaces where they live or their environments because they're burrowing, right? In this case, people are saying, yeah, the mouse is just, he's like, I don't want this. Who left this here? I'm going to move this out of the way. I live here. Wow. And so the mouse is clearing these things. The amazing part is watching him pick up the pocket knife. Yeah. I wouldn't think that the, a, a mouse could pick up a pocket knife like that and just. Well, it, it is his, it, it is away. the size of him. It's it's for, the speed and intensity with which he's going to work that blows my mind. Like, like this what? mouse is on a mission. He's it's just like, oh, no, no, no. This won't Twitter, do it at Brian. all. Uh, Wow, I this think is a, definitely this is an industrious mouse. Which this is, this is okay. a mouse uh, that knows knows what uh, what 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 the deal. I want to make this mouse the CEO of weird things. So, <laughs> this brings us to uh, can can I throw a, a wild speculative uh, discussion that I think we've touched on before because I think we had a story about training uh, ravens or crows to pick up mm -hmm. like cigarette butts yeah, and crows. trade it for food or whatever. And I think I mentioned. Like at a genetic engineering level, and maybe we're just retreading a place that we went before. But how good would you feel about which creatures would do you would you feel good about genetically engineering to serve the interests of mankind? Like whatever this mouse is, I guess in one reality we would bring, we would find another mouse that loves to clean up, and we would breed the two of them together, and eventually we'd create a race of super mice that only wanted to tidy everything. Uh, or, or in a more sci-fi version, we would um, genetically engineer ants to like have a, a secret fourth prime directive that says also clean up all the cigarette butts or whatever. Like, where does your comfort with that sort of playing God end and it becomes awkward? Like, all of a sudden you're not cool with it. 
Because because I, I assume like on the other side of that border is uh, chimpanzees genetically engineered and neurologically programmed to be butlers. And uh, all of a sudden you get like into that subservient slave race uh, animal world, right? And I, th I think we're all agreeing that that would not be great. But where's the middle? Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know, if... Brian. Let's not jump to conclusions yeah. here. <laughs> I mean, look, it would be great if it had free will and chose to work in partnership in, in an <laughs> agreement of free trade. But, but, but like I, I, I want to explore like that middle area where it's weird. Like, like I assume we're cool with dogs, right? We did that with dogs. We took wolves. Like train them, train them to do our bidding. Yeah, we like, like, like we took wolves, and we're like, "Hey guys, new job. You protect us. You, uh, we're always the alpha. You're gonna be our security guards, our our alarm systems. You're gonna be willing to die to protect us. That's your new lot in life. Uh, also, now you're gonna get increasingly ridiculous and cute and uh, uh, pee on our rugs. All opposed, raise your hand and say no. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, say the words. Uh, well, I see a paw over here, but uh, <laughs> uh, no. that doesn't sound like no to me. 100% consensus. Yeah, no, okay. I, I would say the, I mean, there are, you know, we use dogs now, like canine dogs, which help and save lives. But, you know, a dog doesn't know what it signs up for canine school. It gets to go play with other puppies and people and gets tasks and stuff. And the next thing you know, he's chasing down a meth head with a gun. So, yeah. What if the news tomorrow says uh, rogue genetic engineers in China have produced uh, good news? White Bengal tigers are no longer an endangered species because uh, they can all not, be grown not, in the lab. Also, they're not really a species, though, Brian. It's a deformity. But... Uh, okay, whatever. I mean, fine, but 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 there's as many Bengal tigers as we want, but they're yeah. genetically engineered, and all they want to do is. Um, give your children rides around the neighborhood and they will never ever bite anything and they eat tiger chow and everyone can have them now like like do we immediately isn't that celebrate? texas already brian I, man it's the texas of my dreams are you kidding me? Actually, there's gonna know, be so many tigers it, 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 I, think, I think that's more miami than texas <laughs> no you know that, that you know the thing about texas the largest population of tigers in the world is like in texas yeah oh, really? uh, uh, there's oh, a bunch of people collecting exotic pets it's it's kind of a problem when they get loose <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The number of tech number of tigers in Texas is insane. Like, like, would uh -huh. we be happy about that? Uh, of cracking that seal of all of a sudden any animal could be anything we want it to be. Um, I'm, I'm, I mean, I would love. I mean, I think it um, sounds cool to me. I mean, a, a tiger you can go pet. That's like you know, I had a, we had an English mastiff, and he was a sweet, sweet dog. You know, he was a sweet big dog that weighed more than I did, and. You know, if you could do that with a big cat, I had to look after a big cat, you know, a, a mountain lion, and that was terrifying. Um, so to know that this thing's natural instincts weren't to like go through my throat and rip it out, I'm like, yeah, sure. So let's uh, say, let's. Uh, uh, by the way, re real quick, two thousand tigers in the state of Texas—that is second most to India uh, for the <laughs> largest uh, like, population on the planet—and it looks as if. There may or may not be more tigers in captivity in Texas than there are in the wild. <laughs> yeah. Okay, how about this one? Uh, new announcement. Cirque du Soleil announces their new show that takes place. Uh, uh, you, you buy tickets and you line up on the Golden Gate Bridge and they start playing music and choreographed to the music are uh, 30 orca and 20 blue whales that all dance on command. Uh, what, what a change in management for Cirque du Soleil that built its whole name on not using animals <laughs> in, in the light of like, you know, Barnum and Bailey giving up animals. Cirque du Soleil is like, we're bucking the trend, folks. <laughs> well, they, they figured, we're going to zag while the others zig. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> have you dealt game. with this many French Canadian acrobats? Really? I would rather deal with some killer whales. <laughs> but, but 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 they're genetically engineered killer whales that absolutely love it. They're all happy. They're like, I was born for this. This is the best thing in the world. And and they're all having, you know, secret relationships uh, uh, in the dorms where the killer whales stay in between shows. Wait, hold on. wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are you saying that like so there's still SeaWorld or, or that we are just like breeding this new kind of whale that like you can that just, just drop in the and they just do the thing. Correct. Like, they love the idea. They're thrilled. 
uh, there's no nets, and and all they want to do is dance and play on they command. They all know that every day uh, uh, at uh, five, uh, seven, and ten o'clock, they get a bunch of food, and as many as are around will come and do the dance. Right, and and scientists come in, and they're like, uh, oh, we're looking at stress hormones, and these of all the animals that have ever lived, they have the lowest stress hormones. They're clearly having the best time of their life. And uh, uh, look at look at this 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 wonderful drama behind the scenes as as their whales are hooking up behind the scenes and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, uh, then they all want to go to high school afterwards. Face whale dog. We have the happiest whales I've ever seen in my life, and look, they bang. <laughs> I mean, but you get what I'm saying, right? Like, like uh, yeah. ascribe all of. I mean, we're we're cool with humans going and working for Cirque du Soleil, and let's say you could genetically engineer a a bunch of whales so that it was every bit as moral and ethical. In fact, more so because they're guaranteed uh, abundance for life. Um, are we cool with that? Do we like that? I, I mean, I think so. Yeah, there, there, there's uh, certainly very little difference between that and I think how much we all understand breeding or or, or purposeful breeding. Uh, the the question would be, do the animals seem happy? If the animals seem happy, and and we do have that overexcited uh, whale doctor that is uh, uh, giving us the proof as best we understand it, then yeah, I think I think that that there's there's very little. Okay. Uh, is there a counter argument to somebody coming up and saying, hey, uh, in the natural state, there would be three to five normal whales of whatever varieties in this space. And they've been crowded out by your freak monstrosities, your human created Franken whales. And now you're robbing nature of something by the mere fact of your weird whale and whale pony show over here. Uh, yes, literally as a pony riding a whale. <laughs> oh, that's that's got to be like the the last. Uh, also, the ponies genetically engineered as well. Of course, yeah, yeah. Yay! All, <laughs> pony from the moment it was born was thinking about the moment it would leap majestically from the shore onto the back of a whale. <laughs> well, it was you know in you know restaurant at the end of the universe. You know Douglas Adams kind of uh, he, you know they had the, the you know the, the animal that wanted to be eaten right mm -hmm. you know the. You know, and I forget what the, what the term, what he called it. And it enters sort of like in Douglas Adams' brilliant way. It was like the sort of suddenly like, is that ethical to engineer a thing that wants to serve us? Like we, you know, whatever free will you had, we got rid of it and we're giving you a version of it, but one that suits us. I mean, I guess modern economists would, would say that's a nudge because it's like, well, you have total free choice. You could do whatever you want. Just turns out what you want to do is the easiest thing that makes you the happiest, which happens to be doing exactly what works for us. I mean, that's yeah. like, like where, where does that line go? Because like, um, for example, uh, organ harvesting, you know, whether you're, you, you dig donating organs or not, it is a fact that you can increase the amount of available organs by creating an opt out system where you have to actively take action to opt out versus uh, selecting an opt in system where you have to take action to opt in. So, like, I mean, that seems like a fair thing that preserves your free choice, but causes an outcome. Theoretically, yeah, well, wouldn't this be like just a version of that? And stuff too, though, the, and that that that's that the whole opt out thing is kind of still. I'm, I'm a little. Uh, um, think about like when we, we you know you make Unix. Yeah, uh, you know. the operating system. We're gonna take this thing out at a point when you're born and you're not really gonna notice. And later on in life, you know, I'm like, yeah, you're gonna be great for I don't know singing, you know, soprano, being a palace guard for a bunch of my harem, and. So th that's actually a really good question. Is are the two moral equivalents, uh, the amazing Cirque du Whale show and the uh, and, and, and creating Castrati? No takes. Nobody wants to I, touch I that. I, I think that I think that, you know, they don't have to be equivalent, but they can be equal to or greater than or less than they can be on the same. If we're considering this, why is this out of bounds? You know, have we have we moved out of bounds here? God, but, but meanwhile, like like the idea of creating a supermassive swarm of ants that just cleans up after every concert. It lives in the back and it only likes to come out at 3 a.m. And all it, every single ant, all it lives to do is to pick up discarded. I, 
I, I think yeah. you could make the moral argument if, like, you know, dogs that are raised, you know, domestic dogs live longer than ones in the wild, right? You know, their, their life expectancies have increased, right? Quality of life, you know, you, you let a dog get out, they tend to come back home. You know, they're not like, I got to get out of here. I just can't handle it. They're like, no, nah, can I come back in? You know, it's warm and you give me food. Dogs of their own, you know, ability to sort of determine seem to. And you can deal with, like, if they find food supplies elsewhere, whatever, maybe not. But, you know, they, they, they tend to, they like to be part of the human tribe because we've evolved them that way for sure. Um, and I think if you could say the quality of life is better. I mean, I eat, I eat meat, you know, which... I think the life I would rather be a whale in in Cirque du Whale than a chicken <laughs> that gets consumed by me, you know. All right, so I have a question. Is it a moral right. good to help another entity be more intelligent? We we know it's a moral good. I've tried, Brian. People just don't like it. <laughs> we, we we know it's a moral good when it comes to our children. We aspire to make them as intelligent and as self-aware as possible. If you could do that, and, and I think we do that with dogs as well. We want our dogs to understand this is feeding time, poop uh, outside the house, not in the house, all that stuff. But, like, would it be a moral good or bad thing to genetically engineer a carrot, as somebody in the comments is alluding to, to be more intelligent? And There's more... an entire book of the Bible about this. Oh, is it? Adam and Eve. Uh, the apple knowledge, you know, we didn't know we were naked until all of a sudden, hey, we ate the, you know, ate from the tree of knowledge. Oh, wait, I'm naked. Wait, what's going on here? You know, and then 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 all the badness started. I mean, that's the moral lesson from there. So, right. So so ethically, boy, I didn't really think about that. Like, uh, but this no, is where we true. get into the tricky argument, right? Is that like, oh, no. So morally we should be restricting information we should be restricting progress because that is really that's the true gift of mercy we 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 are now on page 1 of the super villain handbook well and and so i assume like we would agree that it's a moral bad if you could wave a genetic wand and cause not only a carrot to have <laughs> to to have uh, intelligence, but also self awareness and full consciousness. And all it does is it grows as as if a human does in with a locked in syndrome, uh, not seeing or hearing or understanding anything, but just suddenly feeling agony beyond words when it's eaten by a, a rabbit or whatever. Like that feels like a moral bad, unnecessarily cruel. <laughs> Well, it's but but meanwhile, I'm trying to square that with with the other side of the spectrum where increasing consciousness and increasing awareness and incre increasing intelligence is a universal good. I don't I mean, I don't know that it is. I'm not saying that it's not. I'm just saying that, like, is there, you know, there there seem to be like optimal levels of like if you're slightly more intelligent, if you and we'll use I, IQs are extremely imperfect measures, but we use IQ as a measure. If if you have a higher, slightly higher IQ, you tend to be a little happier. Above a certain level, it doesn't seem like there's much of a correlation, you know. And in fact, at certain levels, it might be even you might might even feel alienated, right? So we know there's a certain there might be an optimum level and it might have to do with the environment you're in you know if you're if really high iq and you're around a bunch of you know low iq people probably very frustrating um but uh, maybe i mean you know uh, you're you're happier are you happier when you're a kid or when you're an adult uh oh yeah that does bring up the other kind of moral thing because um we want our kids to be happy but we also want them to, when they're older, feel contented. And oftentimes a contented life is one that consists of uh, certainly some, uh, possibly many, possibly extended periods of unhappiness that yielded uh, or, or unpleasantness. You know, it's not pleasant to, you know, birth a baby, let's say. But we well, want yeah, our kids to have those experiences. Bryce brings up the book Flowers for Algernon, which which was a great example of what happens when you raise somebody's intelligence level, but not their emotional intelligence. I I actually, for whatever reason, I've heard this title a million times. I know nothing about this book. Can you give me the the? Did you see the readers? movie Charlie? Uh, no, I, I don't think I did. Oh wow! Like uh, so, it they they take a guy who is below average intelligence, you know, you know, and they give him a, a treatment or serum, whatever, and it makes him smarter and smarter and becomes very smart. And then he sees things very different and whatever. And 
uh, there's a sort of tragedy. You know, Algernon's like, you know, the, I think the lab rat that he looks after, or mm-hmm. or Algernon's him. Um, but anyhow, there's, but anyhow, he basically what happens is he starts to decline and whatnot, and you know, trying to figure out how to reverse it and whatnot. Um, and this is this is so. fictional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, no, well I, because, I because it's it's kind of it's shockingly and I, and close I totally, to. I totally like bungled the story that the characters in the story. People who've read it recently will remember it. But anyhow, it's 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 a a very sort of the idea of what happens when you get you know you're smart and now you you realize how dumb you were, you yeah. know. Yeah. Um. Not d- dumb is a very poor choice of words, and I apologize for that. Uh, when you realize um <laughs> how not unsmart. <laughs> how stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. So yeah, Algernon is the lab mouse, and then Charlie is the guy who has the process done to him. You know, Algernon gets smart, and then Charlie gets smart. But then, basically, you know, it, it's uh, lo- being smart than losing it all. Yeah, he becomes aware of the people in his life who are he thought he was close with, but were taking advantage of him. And uh, uh, he he is it that he ends up regressing back to how he was, or does he die? Uh, well, all I can, alerts. <laughs> this is all I, all all I can think this. of is this is a short story from the '60s. I'm just saying it's a spoiler <laughs> alert for Brian. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Who hasn't read this? It it sounds a lot like Awakenings. With, well, I didn't know it was a short the... story before it was a novel. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, the they made like a, uh, I don't know if the film that they made for it was like a TV movie or just a cheap feature film, but uh, I know I saw that in school, and that's a that's an okay version of that story. Yeah, no, he doesn't die, but he just gets, he basically kind of develops, you know, he regresses dementia and all that until he's back. He remembers that he was smart once. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I suppose this is the part I'm really wrestling with is that there is no right answer because well, e- even the idea of like IQ being more smart, like IQ is defined as your place on a spectrum of uh, on, on a, a curve of all of humanity. And so, yeah, in general, it's better to be slightly smarter than the rest of your cohort, but but once you introduce the uh, theoretical genetic engineering and you could go to unlimited intelligence or unlimited anything's, it, it does get a little a little tweaked. I'll I'll say that okay, like so in in a story and then like make, make correct my bad attempt at trying to remember something I read twenty years ago. It's a surgery and the surgery makes him more intelligent. He works at a bakery and his problem and a big part of the story I remember was his problem was his relations with the people. I'm like yeah. He doesn't have emotional intelligence. You know, he has this capacity now, and that can be a big problem. Is that you can have? You, there are a lot of extremely high IQ people that are very emotionally developed. You know, emotionally developed, and they're fine. You know, they get along. But if you don't have an emotional development, and you know, you don't have to go far than Twitter to see some very capable, famous, smart people who completely lack emo. You know, who you have blowups and whatnot in a way that you're like. How do you not realize you're smart? How do you not realize how you look, you know, or how you're reacting to other people? Right. And I think that's a factor. So if you can increase that, you know, the empathy, you know, one of the things I'm a big, big proponent of is understanding um, uh, theory of mind, you know, understanding, seeing how other people see things. And it is undertaught. It's underrealized. It is it is the most useful skill that can be for developing relationships and understanding this theory of mind. And that is how do other people see things? And then, uh, you know, if you if you're just smart, if you're super smart and you think everybody's dumb, you have very poor theory of mind. Yeah. Uh, uh, without getting much into it, I think it is a very, very key detail to understanding uh, controversial issues like religion and politics. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, well, I was glad we saw that Marvel movies. Sorry. Sure. Or Marvel movies. But, you know, I, just I, a, I did a, have a, a theory of mind moment in which, uh, you know, Josie needed a recommendation for what movie to go see. And I was able to be all like, you know what? I think you're really going to like Captain Marvel. Oh, yeah. Like, I, like once I saw it through her eyes, I'm like, she's going to have a lot of fun. She's going to see these things. Yeah, well, I, I have I have every one of my my dude friends has daughter, a daughter or daughters. And, and they're like, what do you have Marvel? Like, take her kid. I'm like, take her. She's going to love it. You know, mm-hmm. I didn't uh, tell her what's wrong. Right, with so story my, oh my god, my oldest was great. Uh, my test, my test for Josie was, what did you think of Bumblebee? She was like, I loved it. It was great. I'm like, you're gonna love Captain Marvel. Go watch Captain Marvel. <laughs> He's like, not enough John Cena. 
Anyway, oh, wait. Uh, I like Bumblebee. What does that say about me? I oh I I I. I uh, it says that you can only find happiness by going to Patreon.com/slash/WeirdThings. <laughs> yes, Andrew, your life is empty and meaningless until you head on over to Patreon.com/slash/WeirdThings, where you can support this show. Get a custom RSS feed that gets you our after show called After Things, in which we talk about our creative processes and take your emails. Folks, it's the best deal going today. Patreon.com slash weird things. Did I cross a line there, Brian? Uh, no, oh, no, no, no. I, I, I think Justin saw that, uh, oh, that off ramp right there? That leads to 20 minutes of not weird things. <laughs> More Captain Marvel talk. <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, I was not Bumblebee. I like Bumblebee. Yeah. Bumblebee is fun. No, no, Bumblebee was uh, fun. Let me, let me put it this way. <laughs> I, minutes of Bumblebee talk. I can say for a fact that Bumblebee is far and away the very best Transformers movie there's ever been. <laughs> End of my statement. <laughs> that that is a truthful statement. Um, I just watched uh, Age of Extinction the other night because I'm like, you know what? I have not seen every Transformers movie. That's the one that's missing. <laughs> I've seen it now. <laughs> that is also a true statement of fact. Welcome to Factual Things. <laughs> Stanley Tucci is great. Stanley Tucci was great. Um, moving right along. Uh, let's change the topic from cloning and animals and stuff to the, the next item here, um, which, by the way, I didn't bring up the whole cloning thing. That was you, Brian. Yeah, no, that but was the definitely The next topic me. is China has done something. Are you? Was who uh, did they? Did what? They, did They're they, still doing stuff. Cirque to yeah, China. What something. are they doing? <laughs> they cloned something, guys. <laughs> they cloned an animal for their benefit. <laughs> Wait, uh, tell me, tell me more. Guys, when are they gonna stop mucking around these Chinese? So, uh, uh, and this was sort of funny because when he went on that tangent, I'm like, huh? Well, this sort of goes, you know, with the body of this story. But I'm gonna tell you what this is. So, okay. China, they've got. They had this police dog named uh, Kanuxen, Kunshin, I think, Kunshin. And he's like, as far as police dogs go, you know, uh, actually, excuse me, Kanuxen is a, a clone of another dog. I got to get his names right. Um, I don't know if they say with the other dog. The other dog is like, was a super great police dog. Like, this dog was really good, easy to train, could find evidence, was just like a super all around great police dog, right? And they're like, you know what? Instead of trying to go through a bunch of other dumb dogs, let's just take <laughs> this dog and clone him. And so they clone the dog, and so now they have, you know, they're cloning police dogs. Now, this is something that is more and more a part of our mundane life, uh, right? Like, hasn't uh, uh, Barbara Streisand cloned her dog uh, a couple times to make sure really? that she's never without her favorite pet? Oh, my God. No, that's amazing. I didn't know that. I know that we uh, we talked. <laughs> the headline, New York Times, Barbara Streisand explains why I cloned my dog. Penned by Barbara Streisand in 2018. A very Did recent article. Two of them. Is Violet and Miss Daisy are clones of the same dog. Oh, Samantha. And by the way, uh, uh, the, the, the picture on that is the two dogs in a little doggy stroller at the ornate gravestone of the dog they were cloned from. Oh, that's amazing. She's uh, just we, like us, guys. She's just like us. We also talked... Man, this uh, must have been... Just about Michael Jackson. This must have been... <laughs> it's topical. Uh, this this must have been like uh, five years ago, but we talked about... like I, I think I shared with you guys a Wired article that I read that said that um, it's not legal to sell meat harvested from cloned... Uh, cattle, but it is legal to sell meat from the offspring of cloned cattle. Like the cloning process um, is uh, uh, problematic for the first generation, but if they make it through, they're, they're uh, what Stephen King in the Dark Tower called threaded stock, and then all of their offspring is available. So almost certainly by the numbers, by the percentages, considering how much meat gets blended together, uh, all of us have consumed the offspring of cloned cattle. Isn't that crazy? Mmm, yummy. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, look, I, I, this is just a part of our modern world, right? Like, this is this is, um, um, and and as Brian's pointing out, probably more of a part than we might even uh, have wrapped our head around uh, currently. That that we're gonna look back at some point, we're gonna be old, and there's gonna be some report showing exactly how much cloned meat we've we've eaten, and we're all gonna say, well, I mean, none of us died, so cool. 
you know, uh, you can, I mean, you can extrapolate this. One of the things that happened was when we tried to clone primates, we found out that there's uh, a thing called methylation on DNA, which is extra kind of added in code details on there. And without that, things don't really work out as well. And and you've seen sometimes some of like the cattle where they had like twice the muscularity or whatever. So methylation though is a problem that is, is probably a very solvable problem. And so, and that's going to be a thing where we haven't been cloning people yet because that's been one of the stumbling blocks is, you know, with primates, particularly that's an issue. But once you solve that, you know, uh, you know, and there's crazy ideas for like using, you can use, Optics with negative indexes of refraction, so you can maybe theoretically build an optical scanner to sort of scan the methylation, etc. So, um, uh, can can you, know, can, that's, you that's, can you in layman's hard. terms uh, get me closer to understanding what what the methylation process is? So imagine you have you have DNA, but then on the you have a strand of DNA, but let's say the little proteins that attach to it are attached to it too. That, that also have extra information. Like, no, stop it at this process. Like, you know, oh, little, got it. A little the, extra information. So, so this this is all, uh, and, and I'm on the outside. Tell me if I'm right about this. Uh, we we increasingly over the last decade or two have learned uh, the importance of proteins and uh, and and how they shape uh, by by starting and stopping certain processes at certain certain mm -hmm. times. Uh, and this is why when it comes to fighting diseases, something that theoretically you're like, well, it should work. It's because proteins are active or not active or so on. Um, and and wasn't there like a a SETI at home project using distributive computing that did nothing but protein folding. Yeah, protein folding that was that was a big issue. And and uh, uh, Tyler Rizzo, who's who's the smartest person in this in, in this conversation right here, talks about epigenetics, and that's the term we want to use. Is baby basically epigenetics are the things that are basically outside the DNA but still important to carry information whatever through. And things that make changes after uh, after birth. Would, 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 would a caterpillar becoming a butterfly be a, an example of epigenetics or? Um, there, there might be a, an environmental trigger that all of a sudden tells the genes which genes to switch on or whatever. And that's one of the things factors you okay. can have genes that are dormant then all of a sudden something happens you know, in there that says this, you know, people point out, you know, telomeres are more like the little thing, like stop, keep, you know, stop, you know, replicating this point. And somebody uh, points out there. Tell like, well said, no, that, that that's not a, an example of epigenetics. So my guess is she's typing now and we'll, we'll get something. <laughs> yeah. So like, but you can have, you can, yeah, that, that epigenetics is the information that's outside of the DNA strand. Um, I don't know if we could explicitly say that it's because if you find that in certain environments, it doesn't happen or whatever, I, I, I don't know, but you know, more, just just the you know baby inside of the womb you know the mom is can, is helping program the immune system correct you know and so if you're if you're born into an environment and your mom is you're living in that environment you might be more adapted to it when you're born if you come you move a newborn to a radically different environment it's harder for them to necessarily adapt because they didn't have a lot of these little things so so on this police dog topic, I, I'm reading this article from, from Engadget here. They're saying he might be good enough to enter service in 10 months after training. The ultimate plan is to mass produce cloned dogs sometime within the next 10 years. How do we feel about that? Yeah, they, they say that I guess it could take up to five years to train a dog. and They have a dog that learns in 10 years. Um, like 10 months. I don't, I'm not... 10 months, yeah. Yeah, ten months. Sorry, thank you, Brian. And I'm I'm not too concerned. It's not like this is a country that has a habit of like forced marriages and trying to <laughs> engineer, you know, things. So I I can't imagine a, a more <laughs> human centric country to take on this initiative. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I mean it's one of these things. Like, yes, we need. I think we need to be exploring this and doing this. And I think that. We the more informed we all are in asking questions, not necessarily walking into things with opinions and trying to fit them to what we perceive the morality of it to be, but to ask questions to understand it, the better. Uh, like AI or anything, and it, it's this, you know, the the that we could stop it is it's not gonna you, when you try to stop a thing, then only bad actors are the ones doing the thing. Uh, yeah. Meanwhile, and, uh, Tally Zarel in the chat gives a clarification. She says, uh. Uh, I mean, the epigenetics vary from parents, whereas a caterpillar would pretty much always be oriented to become a butterfly at some point. Maybe that transformation yeah. is uh, transformation is mediated through epigenetics, but I doubt that it would be something dependent on methylation and other post-translational modification because they're not as permanent or stable as DNA. That makes sense. I, I heartily agree. 
because I'm not in a position to well, say yeah, I'm, I'm glad she finally got on the same page we were. Yeah, well, but the, the thing is, though, is you might find when you've seen radical changes in, let's say, butterfly wing colors and stuff, like, remember, like, all of a sudden all the, mutter, the butterflies matched the color of suit and stuff like that? Oh, I, I, Those I, might be examples of an epigenetic modification where there's some trigger or something in there that makes it easier to adapt. Yeah, maybe. Th- what was the news story where it's like that was that was a canonical story of, of selective uh, 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 biological pressures for uh, Darwinian fitness, but but in fact it sounds like that's – like new new stuff that says no, that's not it at all. You know, maybe you know one of the things that affects like they talk about plasticity, and that is if your if your mom is a small woman, your womb is only so big, right? And so you're going to be shorter. And then you looked at like these post World War II births where you had a generation after World War II like oh they're big because of nutrition, and the next generation was even taller, even though they had poor nutrition. It was because their mothers were healthy and they had larger wombs. That's the story at least, and they were able to the larger. You looked at birth weights increased. Right. You know, and, the, and these are things that the DNA didn't change, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, so, so OK, vote uh, uh, genetic dog cloning en masse in China. Are we for it or again it? Uh, I mean, I think it's it is it, the, the, the process itself. I think is inevitable. Like we're just going, we, we are getting to that. We're getting to that place and the science is going to be reliable enough that I would, I'm for it, and I am for us actively developing our ethics around it. Yeah, I, the only downside is that um, is I, I only worry about crowding out the ecosystem because in general you want ecosystems to be as biodiverse as possible. In fact, uh, we mentioned this before, but uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's Aurora is all about this in in the context of a space arc, uh, and I worry that the simplicity of just growing a crop of, of clones that are, that are the best uh, will crowd out the space for more diversity. I, I don't, I understand that point, but like, I don't think we need to worry about that with like dogs when there are dogs filling so many different niches and, uh, and niches too. Um, and I would say that in the case of something like, like for police dogs or what they're like, yeah, I, I want us to be doing more of this. I want us to be, you know, doing a lot more of this, you know, so that we can, you know, understand and, and be aware of it. Uh, but, you know, there's, yeah, you, you divert biodiversity is a helpful thing because when you have something that can go through and wipe away everything, but also you don't want to use it as an example, not to, because you're not, you know, but like, oh, we shouldn't you do, you know, genetically modify organisms because then they all become homogenized and more susceptible to disease, like, or we pass on a trait that makes everything much more resistant and helpful, you know? Yeah. So. This sounds like how you get the dogs from Resident Evil. Uh, <laughs> you just keep cloning them, and then they turn into these zombie things. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, whatever, bigot. <laughs> yeah. Um, I got one more story. Kind of a another kind of this is the future is kind of cool and weird. Microsoft announced something. A actually, I think it came out in December, but I didn't hear about it until like a week or so ago. Uh, text world. You're like, what's text world? Imagine a text game. Imagine a computer-generated text game that could generate like you're in a room. There's a key on the door, and there's a doorway. And, you know, what do you do? Go north, go south, grab the key, do this, okay? Text world generates these on the fly. You say how many rooms you want to have, eight rooms, nine rooms, whatever, and it creates it, right? You know, it spontaneously generates these rooms that can be navigatable. Very easy to do. Like you're literally, you do a PIP install and then, you know, PIP install. Next thing you know, you've got the thing up and running one command line in your generated room. Now you read these, like, it's kind of boring. You're in a house. There's this on a table. And you're like this. It's like, well, this is sort of not the most exciting text adventure ever. It's not for you guys. So stop judging. Oh, it's this for is. training rope. Yeah. So, so, so in other words, uh, uh, it's training the AI. We are the data points that allows the AI to figure out, like, okay, in general, people want to know if they can hump the desk or 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 peel the paint off the walls or whatever. Or in even more simple terms, it's like, can the AI figure out like how to navigate? It says, oh, I need a key to open up a door. Yeah, like yeah, like yeah. You know, it's basically let the AI play the game and, and develop it. You can do you know uh, reinforcement learning where it gets better and better each time at learning how to navigate and play the game, and then you can make it more and more sophisticated. Uh, God damn. Can- can we, oh, I guess it's something we have to actually install in order to play live on the air. <laughs> yeah, I you was thinking re- like you can see some examples of that. I was thinking about doing like you know like doing an install on it to show. Um, 
Uh, but if uh, there's a video attached to it, which shows you. There's a getting um, started. Here we go. Here's something on their website. All right. This is text world. I'm gonna, I'll read this out. Uh, you are hungry. Let's cook a delicious meal. Check the cookbook in the kitchen for the recipe. Once you're done, enjoy the meal. You find yourself in a backyard. You make out a patio table, but the thing is empty. You see a patio chair. Wow, isn't text world just the best? The patio chair is stylish, but there isn't a thing on it. You see a gleam over in a corner where you can see a, b a barbecue. There is a closed screen door leading south. There is a closed wooden door leading west. There is an exit to the east. Don't worry, there is no door. Uh, so so is this interactive? Can we uh, type or is this just oh, a photo? Wait, I thought it was. Uh, no. It says it is. Yeah, so here, type type go east, I guess. Mm, well, that assumes my keyboard does it. Uh, okay. Okay, well, uh, let's assume we said But we But did. I think we get the idea of it. Yeah. Uh, it is interesting to – we are accustomed to the idea of procedurally generated 3D worlds, and we are accustomed to the idea of procedurally generated 2D worlds – but I don't know why we skipped over the idea of text. Maybe, maybe to us, you know, mammals, uh, you know, uh, monkeys, it feels like the symbolic transformation of words to 3D space. Uh, I, I guess uh, th that feels like a blind spot. It feels like we should have had this first, right? Uh, I mean, for what navigating text, I, we've been. I mean, the, the earliest AI stuff was trying to figure stuff out. Um, you know, like uh, semantics, understanding semantics intent and stuff. And that natural language processing is very much, you know, it's the heart of it is that. And now trying to understand context and, you know, a big part of what a lot of, you know, research is like, you know, trying to understand what is this, you know, article sentiment? What is the article saying here? You know, every time you talk to one of your voice assistants, it's trying to understand what the hell you want. Yeah. yeah. Can, yeah, can you your type, on that? Uh, so, so Bryce is it, playing the game right yeah, now. Yeah, we got it. Can, to can work. you do weird stuff like like kick kick the table or or? Sure. So we're we're we made it to the kitchen. There's a fridge, an oven, a table, counter. You want to kick? Let's try kick table. Yeah, kick the table. That's not a verb I recognize. Okay. Uh, a worship uh, the hey, table. Pick up, pick up knife. Pick up knife. Sure. Pick up knife. Oh, uh, pick get up two get words. Get yeah. There you go. Knife. You take the knife from the counter. Uh, Throw knife. <laughs> Throw knife. You drop the knife on the ground. Oh, that's not bad. It's 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 got at least that much. Uh, Throw knife at oven. Futile. futile. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, so they understand what we're what this is not a very this is not a super sophisticated like in you know it's a basic you know most of your text adventures have this level of intelligence whatever what's special is that this is a tool for just generating these endless amounts of these rooms and environments and stuff so if you have if you want to have your ai try to figure out how to solve these things you create a you know million of these things all right look i'm okay. i'm wise to what you're up to microsoft how long till this becomes a, a, a cyber sex bot <laughs> where, where it's nothing but a back and forth sexy conversation about what you would do to someone in front of you? I don't know. I mean, I think it's going the other way. I think we're training him to be like, you know, comic book guy. He's a D&D &D player. You know, he's going to be. Oh, that would be great. Actually. I'm a mage level 57. And I think that. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's funny is I was talking on, on Twitter a few months ago about like, you know, what if what if just there was an open ended anything and a human was just, you know, making up the story. But but that's exactly what they're trying to automate here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which all of this just what makes me. You say, could you do an AI chatbot that just argued with you about movies? Uh, ooh, like yeah. just it's like oh, like it, the the prop would always be what's your favorite movie? Well, and, and then, I think I would enjoy that as long as it was programmed not to enrage or be right or whatever, but to enlighten me, like get me to understand why. Captain Marvel was a good movie. No, you just you just feed it negative reviews <laughs> of every movie on the planet, and it just uh, synthesizes into bite size, uh, uh, you know, problems with every movie that's ever existed. It's pretty good. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're gonna get to you know a point where we're trying to do things right now. Like you can have movies that are very good to understand what's going on in the scene because you can or you have programs that can understand what's going on there now. Like, because if you you looking at the software that says, oh, two guys arguing, you know, two two my, man and a woman wrestling on top of a mattress, you know, it doesn't yeah. quite get everything, but they're getting better, and you could start to feed it movies, and it could it could start to figure out like, oh, well, this happened, and that happened, this happened, and that happened, and it got this score, so I guess this is good. I just realized that Justin literally pitched 
Max Trollbot. <laughs> like a robot programmed with all the most heinous negative reviews. <laughs> I think Captain Marvel was bad. Prove me wrong. Uh, picks? Uh, can we have have you guys watched enough for us to talk a little bit about uh, Love Death Robots? I watched a little bit more of that. Uh, I know a single frame of it. Oh, I haven't seen it. Yeah. All right. Well, that's my pick. It continues to be confusing to me because I don't know why I keep watching it. Like every single episode, I think, yeah, that was pretty transparent and obvious and maybe would have impressed me when I was 12. I think it's just designed <laughs> for 12 year old boys. Uh, well, you know, you know the, the story the about animation the animation is gorgeous, though. But go ahead. We know the story about the algorithm and how it how it plays them for you. Yeah, uh, they are like randomly assigning different accounts, different episode orders. So they've said that there are four different ways that the episodes can be ordered, and Netflix has said that they are not tied to any information that they have about you, despite some. I was just saying, if we have it. Netflix thinks Brian's a twelve-year-old boy. Uh, maybe, maybe so. Uh, also, but they're all—all all the shorts are like. I mean, they're selling this as a mature, is, is, a mature anthology. Is broken. Like, like, like. I can't. Uh, this morning, mm -hmm. like, I had taken a, a week-long break since I had watched any, and I, I clicked on episode five, and then it gets to the end, and it says uh, next episode, and I'm like, great. I let it auto go to the next episode. Goes back to episode one. And then uh, keeps doing that after every single show. Like, I have to go to you the know, menu. I did have that happen once also where it wanted to send me back to the first one. But and it does ha it did keep my position in some of the other ones. But it, it definitely is not perfect. Yeah. So the uh, – I, I don't know. Like, um, I don't want to say it's bad. It's just everything about it is cliche. And part mm -hmm. of me, I think, loves it because it makes me nostalgic – for when I was uh, when I was 12 years old, and I remember getting uh, science fiction anthologies, you know, like you know, Young Aliens or or whatever, uh, and it was all uh, short story. When you think about those those three to 20 page short stories that you would get in those old pulps, like that's what this feels like. And uh, you know, you, when you only have 12 to 20 minutes, there's not really much of a thing you could set up and. I, I wonder if it's just an artifact of, of me having read a lot of science fiction that the moment the first idea comes up, I instantly assume, you know, it's like, well, the obvious thing would be to make it this. And then it turns out to be exactly that. But like looking past it, where it's like I'm not grading it on the quality or the depth of the storytelling, it's like all of them are obvious. None of the twists are surprising. Um, but But I can't know what it looks like to somebody who hasn't heard versions of this story before sure you know, you know somebody who who hasn't already heard the idea of you know beautiful ex-girlfriend turns out to be alien intelligence or whatever you, you know it's a very very good point I'll, I'll make the argument that if it's really well told you'd be fine watching it anyways because you're like i know this oh i love this way it's done and i it's you know the kind of it is the curse of knowledge and that's you know I got excited when they were going to do, like, Sci-Fi Channel was going to do George R. R. Martin's Night Flyers as, as a TV series. Because, like, I love the story, and I, do, I actually dug the 80s movie because it was kind of a cool, different thing. And then I'm like, yeah, because it's so much more than just, you know, what happened on this spaceship? Everything's weird. And then it's like, nope. Every sci-fi story in space now is that, you know, it's this, it's the Mar Mary Celeste. They all do that. And it drives right. me nuts because it's like, it feels fresh. If you've never watched anything in science fiction and you have no idea, you know, from limb on forward of the haunted space station or spaceship, you know, it's one of the things like there's there are a number of tropes, which is why Rick and Morty is so amazing, because it's like they know all the tropes and a minute into it. They're like, yeah, we know this is a trope. We're going to use this to go totally to the different way. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a it's an issue of depth. Right. Like, I think even outside of the structure of having, you know, a sci-fi story with a twist at the end, like there's not enough depth and, and it could be because these are short and you don't have a lot of time to dive into these worlds, but also like some of the writing's just not great. And uh, some, you know, it's... Agreed. And uh, there have been a couple that despite, you know, everything being fairly transparent, I was like, uh, that was still pretty great. Um, and, and some of it, they, they do well on the world building. What's the one with like the succubus uh, that... Uh... Oh, a Good Hunting. Yeah. Good I Hunting thought, is very, very good. I thought that was a really good one. And, and I liked Suits a lot, even though it's just a straight up video game. It's Fortnite. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, 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 um, 
but the animation is gorgeous on all of these. And again, uh, here's the part that kind of breaks my heart is I would love to share any of these with my 15 year old daughter, but, but mm -hmm. the gratuitous, uh, like, like I, no, no parent wants to recommend any of these to their kids and their, their teenage kids are the target demographic for all this. So I guess I, you know, I, I, I don't know. It's so like, even the cutesy, <laughs> Like like puffy uh, uh the yogurt one where, yeah. where they, like for some reason let's just you know show an angry woman flashing her tits for for no reason that that, that contributes nothing to the story sure. outside of checking that box of having tits in there. Uh, yeah. it it was uh I I, I, I also I, why I, what are you doing? But also I think as a parent you would maybe not you're you you, you would not want to show this to your kids. But also if your kids have Netflix. They could find it. Oh no no, no. but but I, but actively, right. I know Penny won't like it. Oh, she will I see. she will be very put off. She was like, "Why are you doing this amount of cartoon gore for gotcha. nothing that adds to the story? Yeah. Why am I watching pretty much straight up pornography uh, of, mm -hmm. of of a very high resolution sex? Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, I mean that that yes. is that is that is this close to to being straight up porn hub, hub on there. Um, you know, uh, uh, she wouldn't like it. And meanwhile, I feel like I want her to experience all of these classic, obvious tropes. I, I, sure. I but, but I can't recommend it to her because she won't like it, and I'll feel weird telling her she has to watch it. I bet you could guide her. I don't think you could be like, "Hey, check out this thing," and leave her to her own devices. But I bet you could like cherry pick and say, okay, "I did. I, I, yeah. I, I handed her uh, one, uh, three robots is the one story that I was able to hand her. <laughs> Everything else, you, had... you know, there's a lot of other great anthology science fiction out there too, Brian. Yeah, True. but 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 also none of them currently in the cultural gestalt. None of them, none of them of the quality of animation that we're seeing on this. I mean, there are things that it does very very well, which only makes it more painful that that they veered into territory that was so unnecessary and doesn't yield but, any any benefit. But imagine if you had a fifteen year old son and not Penny, right? Like like would would that be a different? I mean, because a lot of the sensibilities that you're talking about are very specific to Penny. Sure. Uh, if if there was a different sense of sensibilities, then maybe you could uh, gleefully recommend it, knowing that it was a little bit of uh, uh, weird and naughty and and something that you uh, that they would enjoy. Yeah, and 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 again, like uh, it's just heavy metal. If you, if you saw heavy metal as a yeah. kid, that's what it's like. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Uh, hey, uh, watch uh, Deadwood. I saw the trailer for the Deadwood movie. I really like the trailer for the Deadwood movie. Go watch Deadwood. I don't know why uh, uh, some people haven't seen it. It's crazy, man. That show is great. Yeah, is that te I? I have not seen a frame of Deadwood. Does the teaser is the teaser good? Uh, yeah. I mean, the trailer. I don't I mean. I, I, I'm so un unrepentantly in love with the show. They could literally just uh, have uh, Sheriff Bullock and Elsewhere and farting at each other, and I'd be super excited to watch it. But uh, uh, beyond that, uh, go check that out. And oh, oh another one. Uh, uh, Veep is coming back. Final season of Veep. I wound up getting into a little bit of a Veep uh, uh, hole uh, when I was uh, read the Entertainment Weekly article about them putting together the final season. But it is just so vulgar and so funny and such a, in, in my mind, uh, Armando Anucci, who did that and in the thick of it, just has such a beat on the uh the the world the the vain world of politics this like cartoonish uh, uh element of of politics and political figures and how government works that i just i love mostly because it just lampoons the sepia toned brave man fighting through the gridlock kind of mythology that the the aaron sorkins of the world like to uh like to to rhapsodize about which has its own moments and merits but Man, it's also just good to see a bunch of, uh, of, you know, slimy lizard people curse at each other. Yeah, I didn't know that was coming up. That's what next week. The I believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Uh, I have a pick. I am surprised. I am the third person in line and the first person to mention this. I went and saw Us this weekend, and it is a crime that the three of you have not yet. Oh my God, is it that good? It's very, very good. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh, uh, Us is, probably, you know what? This is yesterday... the new Jordan Peele movie from the the writer director of Get Out. Yeah, I should have gone by myself to see it yesterday. Yesterday, I finally had my first day off in like two weeks. Uh, dang mm. it! And of course, like my wife wouldn't want to go, my kids wouldn't. Um, yeah, we were, maybe I'll do that. We tonight. were gonna, we were gonna see it. Couldn't get a seat. Couldn't get a seat. Yeah. So I'm gonna ask you a question though, Bryce. Sure. 
And I'm not going to spoil uh, anything. I'm I'm not going to spoil anything. No, no. On a scale of Get Out. A scale of Get Out to what? Oh, no, no, no. Get well, Out, oh. I assume, is the high end because Get zero Out was get very out, good. Where would you put that? Oh, zero to Get Out? Um, yeah. How many, uh, in, in the number of units expressed as Get Outs, uh, how many <laughs> Get Outs do you give it? So uh, it's, it's, it's a sl- it's a kind of different direction not even direction it's a different sort of thing than get out is um but i think i think it's like 90 percent of a get out all right so i'll be disappointed okay well <laughs> i like it, get out but i'm yeah. like i thought George, i think jordan Bill's a great director and uh-huh. all that but when i got to the end of get out i'm like really I'm like this is this is the conceit this I mean, is I'm, the conceit I, that 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 is where you and i take different paths because i loved the fact that it it took that direction i i i i yeah i know i understand but i'm like this is i i'm like this is the longest k and peel key and peel sketch i've watched mm-hmm. <laughs> you know i'm like it's it's a key and, i'm walking on it's a key and peel sketch it's a key and, which is not a bad thing sure but <laughs> no. I mean, it's like both of those movies are in if they're not horror films they're horror adjacent and it that the it's i've been reading a lot of the uh, various criticisms online and it feels very weird to like try to apply realism to horror like no one's out here asking how a clown is living in the sewers and right. why no, that but, doesn't but, hey the, that doesn't I, that's, I would, you know the, the the yes and the thing is though is that if it's true to the, it's the rules of the universe if something's true to the rules of the universe then you're fine you know mm-hmm. like like if you're if the characters are consistent and behave in the world like as you would think they would behave then you go okay this is fine like you, know, you watch a ghost story like Ghosts are real in this, and what would they behave like real people would towards that? That's my, sure. if they're like, you know, that's my criteria. Yeah, and, you know, the discourse that I'm reading online is not even always at that level. So, I will say, I read, I, I read a glowing review, like, as, like, it, like that it was like a once in a generation uh, a, a movie uh, about mm-hmm. the American family from Breitbart.com today. So oh, wow. I think it, it certainly has a weighty mm-hmm. uh, 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 kind of uh, intellectual uh, bent to it, at least in, in the vague descriptions that I read in the review. Uh, uh, obviously, you would not assume that Breitbart.com <laughs> would be the place where the, uh, uh, the, the, the black event of the movie season would be lauded as uh, something that is absolutely uh, go take your family to see yeah. uh but uh i'm i'm, I'm pumped to see it i i, I'm, I didn't I'm, check it yeah out. i'm pumped too. I, lo- I love jordan i think he's brilliant and i also think that he's great that he's at this point kind of like m night shamalian was at the height where he can make stuff that nobody else is can make you know he can do mm-hmm. stuff because he's able to like executives aren't going to shut him down and make him do something more mundane or whatever sure. you know get out i love the fact that it was risky for what it was trying to do and the premise and stuff and i'm like Nobody else can make this movie right now, you know, mm-hmm. and so I'm excited about that. Yeah, I, I, just... uh, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, I mean, there's there's so much that's good about us that I'd love to talk about in a spoiler in time or on a on a spoilery talking segment. Um, although, also, I think the reason I ding it is because I know there are a couple of things in the film that all three of you are not gonna like. Uh, probably just based on on well i don't know i think i can think of a thing that you guys aren't going to like about the film but uh it's still a... uh, we, i will i will definitely see it the only yeah. reason why i didn't see it this weekend was because my, my father-in-law was in town so we were like playing um oh, sure. forest host but uh that will that is on the list that is on the list of things to go uh to go see two thumbs up cool no i'm definitely gonna see it andrew you got a pick I got a pick. Um, my pick, we saw this Apple announcement. They talked about the Amazon credit card and all that. Or excuse me, the Apple credit card. It reminded me of, I use the Amazon one um, because, like, I buy about everything from Amazon. And so if you're, you know, just, just to consider if you need a credit card, want to use a credit card, the Amazon one, if you have it enabled with Prime, whatever, you get 5% back on all of your AM- purchases from Amazon itself. And then it's like, you know, 3% and, uh, like, restaurants and then, you know, whatever the percentage is. I, I find it 
great. I, you know, I'm one of these people I just pay off the balance every month. So it's like I'm getting 5% back on most of my purchases and stuff. So if you're thinking about a credit card and using Amazon a lot, it's great. You know, when Apple comes out with theirs, it sounds like it'll be interesting. But anyhow, I just wanted to point that out. Because I've sometimes talked to people like, oh, the Amazon, one to you. I'm like, I get 5% back on everything on Amazon. It looks like they have a couple of Amazon cards. Mm -hmm. there's, there's a Chase one. Oh, maybe, maybe this is the same one. I don't see the 5%. I see the 3%. So maybe it's there's a deal. if you're Amazon, if you have it with if you're a prime member, there's a there's an Amazon prime member version that gets you five percent back. Oh, I see. Uh, it's at least that that's what I get. You know, I double check that, too, just because I was trying to see, like, what are the conversions? So um, that obviously is the one to get, I think, if you buy a lot through Amazon. Cool. Cool. All right. It's been weird. Wow. Perfect timing. Awesome. Uh, in seven minutes, uh, I got to pick the kids up at the bus. Uh, do you do you guys want to take a break long enough for me to get the kids, or do we want to? I'm fine. Sure. Start. Yeah. Yeah. Just go. Yeah. Uh, okay. Cool. I'm gonna use the restroom. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, uh, also us uh, making a lot of money. Like, they are saying 70 plus million opening weekend? Yeah, Gambling Man has given us sass in the chat for not, or for having underbid it. Sure. Um, reminder, uh, quality of movie is not an ind indicator of uh, box office success. <laughs> make, yeah. Right, and, uh, and historically, horror and a rating of R in the summer draft uh, has historically meant that there is a, uh, a, a cap on what you can expect from it. And it's great that this is surprising us by making a lot of money because it means probably more awesome stuff like it. Yeah, yeah. sign uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> but acting like it was obvious to everyone. No, it was uh, not obvious to everyone. That, that, so you're you're bidding into the draft. You're not bidding like if they, these are not fair market prices that we are setting. Right. You know, these are these are within within the the the, the, the game itself. Sure, I think. Seventy yeah. million is far above. I will say, look, if you want, if you want someone to eat poop, I will eat poop. I did not think it was going to debut at seventy million. Oh no way! I, I I would have pegged like seventy to ninety million total gross, maybe, but mm -hmm. but it's going to blow right past that. It will probably be the buy of the draft, I think. Yeah, at uh, eight dollars. Gamble, 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 except for it and Halloween did really well. You're right, and those were remakes about uh, properties that people knew really really well. So this expands sure. that beyond. And also, now we add that mm -hmm. horror is having a moment. Also, you know, uh, we, let me point out that Halloween is not in the summer. Yeah, that was a winner. Yeah, it was. It was in the summer. And 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 look, uh, uh, to be honest, it's like it, it makes you think maybe something like Pet Cemetery is going to do really well, which has gotten really great reviews. Possibly. Uh, yeah. Uh, now we, we're we're just in a mood. We're in a national mood. We're in a big scare. mood. We're in a Ooh. very big mood. Scare us. Movies. Ooh, big move. Here, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna use the wrist. Sure. Hey, Justin. Hey, man. What's going on? Oh, you know, just uh, doing a little bit of work. Wait, hold on. Is draft is draft.nightattack.com not going to where? Not going to the new draft, one? Draft.diamondclub.tv. Draft.diamondclub. Or draft.nightattack.tv. Uh, uh, they used they they used to be a bunch of different versions. Yeah, nightattack.tv is the old look. This is yeah. the 2018. Uh, but draft.diamondclub.tv is where you're going. Oh, and that's the new, the new. That's that new, new. That new, new. Um, John was saying that uh, Captain Marvel has underperformed based to their expectations. Really, 321 million. Uh, that. I could for for a thirty six dollar buy. I can understand that. Uh, but look, it looks like we uh, we've got uh, you know, Dumbo, Shazam, Pet Cemetery. I don't know now. And now also the 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 there's word on Rocket Man. Have you been following this Rocket Man controversy, Bryce? No, this is the Elton John film. Yeah, they're they're cutting a what is being described as a naked gay cuddling scene okay uh, uh apparently uh elton john and his uh, agent uh had a, in real life an affair and and this is uh indicated in the movie but i guess they, they cut it to remain a pg-13 movie oh 
that's a bummer, I guess. Well, I mean, I, 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 I don't know. Like, the controversy was a little odd because it came from, like, behind the scenes. Uh, and it's, like, weird that it's like, because you got to figure decisions like that are made all the time. Sure. Right, like uh, keep this, don't keep that. If you're going for an R, then you do this, and if you're going for a PG-13, you do the other thing. But if you are looking to make a PG-13 movie, mm -hmm. then you know you gotta cut, you gotta cut the butts. There's not that many butts in in a PG-13 movie, especially if sure. you're gonna indicate drug use and a bunch of other stuff. Like, like that just seems like it seems like a. I would prefer the the R-rated. Or NC-17 rated Elton John oh, Jesus. biopic, <laughs> just because like that's like he he left he led a famously uh, uh, debaucherous lifestyle. Sure, uh, I mean depends on where you're standing and calling debauchery, Justin. Yeah, uh, there's also like a weird thing of like, well, I, I don't know, I I get it if if it's a thing for the rating, but also. Are there are there other reasons? Oh, you're like I, well, I look a little scancy pants at that. Like, uh, is this a China thing? Is this a just a, uh, a, a an audience's thing? I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, it, it's 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 an interesting thing because that movie cannot, like, that movie seems like it. Like, I am I am upset with the fact that this is the controversy because. Uh, being invested in the financial success of that movie, I do not want. I, I, I want it to be a national holiday for the gay community. <laughs> like mm -hmm. I want, I want everybody uh, uh, to be very excited to support the Elton John uh, a thing. And this does undercut that. This is like, like, oh, is it going to be, you know, whitewashed or sanitized in a way that, uh, you know, I think Bohemian Rhapsody. Uh, kind of set a tone of like, all right, well, we're not going to run away from these things that everybody knows, but we're certainly not going to make it all about that. We're not going to yeah. make it all about Freddie Mercury, the crazy guy. Yeah. Hmm. But then again, maybe it's maybe it's just you know Elton John is is mom rock, and everyone's going to go see it with their kids because all the, mom, the parents know the songs and their hits with the kids. Like who knows? Maybe yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it, it, I don't know. Uh, I probably I don't know if that's I don't I don't know if that's a movie I'm going to see. I mean maybe. I don't know. Are you, are, are you an Elton John a fan of the Elton John songbook? I mean, he's got he's got some bangers, but I I I don't know. I, I think in a in a especially in a summer that is jam packed with good movies week after week. Uh, yeah, I don't know I, if that I, beats out. Like, I I would rather go. I would probably go see Ma on the same day than Rocket Man, or maybe even Godzilla. Like, like. A biopic is not really my speed anyway. But I don't know. He's not, I mean, depending on where they end that movie. If I'm going to guess that it's the moment uh, in his life that is fairly cinematic where he tries to kill himself. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say that his as biopics go. You have a natural ending point that kind of tells that story. Yeah. Uh, that early Elton John kind of story. Um. The, the, the question then going forward is whether or not it's a decent flick. I mean, because uh, those a movie yeah. like that doesn't really have to be groundbreaking. It can literally just be he bops from place to place and shakes hands with other actors playing other famous singers and sings songs. Yeah, I guess so. Um, hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, the comment on the up upcoming Godzilla movie about it looking good in the comments. I agree. It looks extremely cinematic. Extremely. I hope... Godzilla movies are hard structure wise, plot wise, because any any time your premise is we watch a giant thing devastate a city, you know, it 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 ends up being they, they make really good B movies. It's hard to have a really good, you know, feature. I'm like yeah. I like Skull Island. I thought that was enough people dealing with weird and strange stuff while we're watching monsters stomp each other. Yeah. Uh yeah, that I I have not gotten into any of really the Godzilla 
really anything. Uh, but that movie looks big, and they are setting up like they, they're setting up like a King Kong Godzilla crossover. Yeah, which again, it's it's one of these on the surface sounds cool, but it's like I you know I have a problem with movies where you're you know the our climax is going to be punching each other and punching each other really really hard and then whoever punches the hardest wins sure but I, I also think like at least godzilla and king kong is a more enticing bullet point than any superhero fighting any other superhero you know yeah i mean no i agree it's, i mean it's and, a it's that's not a super fair comparison to make because i think it's not i think both of them are, are i agree that they're not like a great selling point but you you know, you look at how they market these Marvel movies sometimes as just like, hey, get to see who's fighting who now. Oh, but it's they're like, always well. better. I mean, the Marvel movies are always, generally, maybe except for recently, you know, way more sophisticated than that. And, you know, that, that mm -hmm. you know, at their best, there's, there's, it's not, sometimes it's we got to get the what's it from the things, that, but the, it, the, the, the better ones, you know, the plot points can be, you know, you know, Spider-Man Homecoming is like we're just trying to stop this military technology from getting into the wrong hands. You know, that's sure. the objective. Not we got to go to the bad guy's base and punch him until you know, the, <laughs> almost every DC movie. You yeah, know, that's true. Our Transformers. You know, it's all like I'm gonna. We're, mm -hmm. And it's the punching should be part of it, but you know, yeah. Civil War. You know, Civil Wars. You know, we got to stop this technology. And it, and it. You know, and there's the bad guys are part of it, but you know, you know. Uh, Robert Redford's not much of a match for Captain America, but mm. all of the tech and everything else is, so. Yeah. Ooh. <coughs> anyway. mm. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of waiting for another movie subscription, another movie pass type service. Alamo, Alamo announced that they're doing, they're expanding theirs nationwide. Mm -hmm. um, Regal hasn't announced one still for some reason, uh, and I like the Alamo, but it's always like I I always go and end up like spending because that's what they want you to do, right? They want you to go and because you're there and because there's a menu, they want you to buy a bunch of food and drinks and stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I I the thing that I like about Movie Pass partially is that I could walk into a little theater and just sneak in and not have you know the constant food influence we're in the middle of amc country you know and so i've got the oh, sure. amc pass which you know i love 20 bucks a month and it's like if we see one movie and to be honest like probably don't even sometimes have my, probably a month or two where we didn't see a movie and then maybe, maybe make up maybe we're breaking even on it but yeah uh that freedom to know like all right if we're gonna both see we're not gonna spend 40 you know online ticket we're not gonna spend 50 bucks and then go yeah i should have just bought it and watched it at home um, so yeah. like, yeah, the AMC pass has been great. Everything I wanted out of the movie pass, but with less shadiness. And that AMC one has like a uh, concession discount, right? Cause the, yeah, you stuff? can get some discounts and you can, you know, and you can do the advanced order. So your food's waiting. So, I mean, that, oh, that's, nice. we spend more on food because of it, which is like you said, that's the plan, but I, I don't mind as much because if I, if we go see a movie and it's the second movie we see in a month, we're not paying anything from the movie. And so we'll right. spend the 20 bucks on concessions. Yeah. 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 Which is the same as spending, you know, three dollars at seven <laughs> eleven. Uh yeah. And then it was it came out that like movie pass is I guess back on their on their BS and is back on <laughs> yeah. a ten dollar unlimited plan oh. kinda of. it the, feels like every every two weeks the movie pass story is it's back and it's a new thing, but it's a back new thing. That's usually good for business. It's very yeah. So when you your messaging is constantly reminding people about how you failed previously but what? now you're gonna and now we're it. good at now we're back to the good way remember Here, the way you didn't like it now we're in the good way here's what i love about the amc pass yeah. okay is you you it's 20 bucks a month and you can see any screening i've already got my tickets for dumbo and shazam nice you know order advanced the really super the nice seats we like the because they tell you as soon as tickets go available you can order now and so that's the the planning ahead so it, like i have no anxiety about you know if you're gonna you know, get like, a seat yeah, we that's, didn't. I, we could have ordered us cute. seats. Yeah, mm -hmm. but yeah, didn't. that's pretty good. Because the movie pass, at least when I had movie pass, OG movie, no, not OG movie pass, movie pass 2.0, whatever, you'd have to be at the theater to mm -hmm. order uh, to check in. 
Uh, yeah, and they they on me they made it where like I had to I had to not only that I had to uh, uh, show take photos of my ticket stubs and ticket. send it to them. That's right. That's right. But yeah, I wish Regal did it because I like Regal and uh, yeah, the Regal is closer than yeah. the Alamo or the AMC. Here. Alrighty. Uh, you guys uh, want to do a little after things? Yeah, we can do. Re- mm, mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, we uh, just noticed advanced tickets are on sale for Hellboy. Oh. Um, Very cool. Which I have. Yeah, that's what I dig about this. Mm. Hey, Andrew, you want to do a show? He's no, I don't want to do a show, Brian. Okay. I want to stare at my ticket stand. <laughs> oh, oh, you're back, Brian. I'm sorry. I I didn't realize this 20 seconds here was going to impact everything. <laughs> um, Hellboy, Brian, it could be good. Could, could be it? good. It could. That's I what it says it on the movie poster. Could Hellboy. Good. It, it could, could be good. Ah, oh, hell. Let's go watch Hellboy. Could be good. Um, yeah, I'm ready to go, but did we get any questions for After Things? Uh, we did not this week, unless I sent you one and I forgot about it. No. Um, let me do a double check uh, for Bryce. I could just reread like questions like I did last time. <laughs> 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 that actually ended up being a good follow-up thing. Yeah. 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 I think. Mm. Uh, okay. We're ready to go. Okay. Then uh, whenever you're ready. Oh no! Hold on, just for Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hello and welcome to the After Things podcast. I'm Andrew Maine, joined by Brian Brushwood. Yeah. Justin Robert Young. Oh, yeah! Oh. And Mr. Bryce Castillo. Oh, yeah! Yeah! yeah. yeah. Today's episode is all about how to make an entrance. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> um, question. Um, do you, do you guys like to learn things? A little bit. I do. Yeah, I love it. I love learning, man. Every time I'm dumb, I'm like, man, I got to smarten up. Yeah, you know what I don't like is learning things the hard way. Everyone talks about learning things the hard way. I mean, Uh it's probably the most effective way, (laughs) like by trial and error, but I don't like it. I wish there was a better way. Yeah, smarter way. So, so how much, how, like, what are your, what are your processes for learning things? It depends. Uh, I, I remember. Uh, especially in the early days of going independent where it's like you have a goal and you need a thing and you can't afford the thing. So you're like, well, how do I learn to make the thing? And then you uh, have to learn a thing. Just everything's kind of project oriented. But nowadays I like learning in the abstract, like listening to nonfiction books. Although even that's kind of our job too, because our job is to get together once a week and talk about interesting stuff that we learned. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, you know, I, I think, uh, uh, tutorials online in general, like that's, that's, uh, you know, for any kind of like skill that I need to develop, uh, uh, is, is, is good. And then learning, uh, from, by example, from my, from my friends. So Bryce, uh, it's usually in response to an issue or like if I, I tend to do most of my learning when I need to do something and I don't know what it is. You know, uh, that's pretty much how any website I've ever built in my life has come about is uh, just Googling whatever CSS is at the, at that in that year uh, and then trying to put something together. You know, I watched uh, there was a video clip of Elon Musk speaking at uh, a, Flint, a school in Flint, Michigan. Right. So he's talking to kids and he was talking about learning. And he, and he said kind of you know, and he had a great Elonism is like, you know, I tell tell my team, you know, whenever we need to do something, learn how to do it, go look at YouTube. It's everything. People tell you everything on YouTube. And it and it's, you know, very true and it, it very much like a modern thinker to go like, yeah, there's a lot of crap, but there's like really help like I'm like if I'm like Bryce if I'm doing coding stuff or something like this, I need to figure something out. I go to look at YouTube and like, oh, there's a video. Somebody's showing me how to do this little thing. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh just quick side note on on that same thought um one thing that bryce and brant are both good about but but i would see bryce do it more and i'm trying to adopt this habit Mm -hmm. is i would spend all this time trying to figure out where's the freaking button to do the thing where's the freaking button to do the thing and then at some point bryce says it's right there i'm like how do you know that and i see the phone in his hand and a a video (laughs) like i'm trying to be better about Mm -hmm. not 
failing two or three, five, seven times before I give up and go to Google. Like once you just think of mm -hmm. Google as your, your hard drive, and if it's not in RAM upstairs, then it must be on the hard drive. Yeah. Just go straight to the hard drive. Because usually, cause, cause usually if anybody asks me how to do something, half the time I don't know what it is, and I'm just going to Google it for them. Right. And so, you know. Well, And, and, and <laughs> I like... would get embarrassed uh, enough uh, after enough iterations of that that I'm mm. that I'm slowly trying to adopt the <laughs> habit of just, well, what would Bryce do? He would Google it. Let's just do that first. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah. It is so helpful. Like, I have a, my friend John, who we've had on the podcast before, is an engineer, and, and we'll work on projects. And it might be like, you know, he might come help us with a film thing, and, and we'll have, like, a camera, like a new camera. Or we'll be doing something from building a drone or whatever. And it's funny because both of us are like that. We're like, oh, how do we do this? He'll have his laptop open on YouTube, and I'm over on YouTube, and we're just looking at tutorials. And 10 minutes later, you have a solution. And you actually understand it better instead of, like, you know, and, you know, it's – uh oh, you're muted. Uh, uh, Google how to unmute. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I hit, actually hit it with my. Uh, this was moving my pad for my wrist rest. <laughs> so, muted myself. Sorry. Apparently, wait. hitting the space bar will mute you. By the way. <laughs> uh, things I learned today. Uh, but anyhow, yeah. I mean, it's just it's super super helpful to do that. Um, Brian, I'll note. I, I'm going to point out something about you that like. You listen to more audiobooks, like how to or informative stuff, than I think anybody I know. Uh, yeah, I don't know how it happened, but I guess I guess I'm like four years into this kick. Uh, I, I think I've mentioned this before. Like there are a few informational podcasts that I like a whole bunch, and uh, at some point, I think it was a Freakonomics episode that I was listening to. Uh, like for my entire life, anytime somebody came on to plug a book, I would enjoy the content and sit through them mentioning their book and then uh, politely and then the content would end and then i'd be like oh man i wish i heard more of that guy oh well and then <laughs> like at some point it hit me like a ton of bricks I'm like hey dummy there's a whole book of exactly the kind of stuff he's talking about right now uh why don't you listen to the book and uh, i was never much of a nonfiction uh, fan until i realized that they're just extensions of your favorite guests on podcasts and you know, once 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 you start getting into it, you you develop your favorite nonfiction authors. You know, you you. Uh, uh, Justin, did you ever? I, I'm guessing the answer is no, because you've got so many other projects, but you still haven't listened to um, Conspiracy by Ryan Holiday yet, right? Yeah, nope. like that's one that I never would have gotten there if I didn't uh, uh, follow through. You know, becoming a fan of Ryan Holiday stuff, because on the surface I wouldn't have. I, I don't think I would have found that on the shelf and jumped in, but instead it was maybe my favorite book from last year. So a point uh, I want to bring it to is there's in the comment section. I was just looking at the background of this is like if you code like one of the sites you go to all the time is Stack Overflow. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. In, fa in fact, I've heard it. I've heard it described that a programmer's job is to be good and fast at finding stuff on Stack Overflow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, it, and it's funny because it is this it is this farmer's almanac resource that underlines so much of how things get done. I was thinking about this the other night. You know, I was, I was looking something else and like Stack Overflow got like, oh, we can't find this right now. And I was like, oh my, I'm like, oh, what's going on? You know, and uh -huh. and I'm like, I know nothing about. I know, I, I know Joel Spassky. I know there's some names associated with it. I know the Stack Exchange. I don't know anything about it. It's a privately held company. You know, they've got the most amazing resource in the world that you know hundreds of thousands millions of coders use every day to figure out how to do stuff and i'm like if you wanted to you know attack the vital infrastructure of the world you know that would be it there Forget it all Wikipedia. is we could just make that stuff up uh, yeah uh is a uh, stack overflow is different from stack exchange it's a uh, stack exchange owns it oh got it but what what is the brand difference between the two Stack Exchange owns several different properties. Got it. So, so, so it's not it's not a functional website. Stack uh, Exchange looks like a just a general question and answer site. And Stack Overflow is programming related. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. If you're like, how do I do this in you know Ubuntu iOS or whatever, like it'll you it generally end up at a at a Stack Overflow site. But anyhow, they they built up a great resource for this stuff, and it's super helpful. So like Brian, how many how many books do you listen to a month? 
I know that every year I, I, I'm on the platinum plan of uh, Audible, which is two books a month. So that's 24. And I always run out every year, usually buying six to eight more credits. So I, I'd say I'd say 30, 30 books. And I would say two thirds of them are nonfiction. So Wait, how many a month? Uh, oh, two, two, uh, I guess uh, probably three per month would be, okay. would be uh, two and a half. Justin? Uh, I mean, l lately it's been uh, an anomaly compared to where it normally is, but uh, I, I would say on average uh, two a month. Bryce? Uh, zero. Yeah. <laughs> I, zero. I, I, yeah, I, I don't. Zero. I know reading is is not. A, hey man, a big you want part you want to flip around? How many Japanese import games have you played this month? <laughs> not zero. zero. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Zero. Oh, we all have our strengths. <laughs> uh, but I, again, I and I don't. I I I downgraded my plan. I go through you know periods where like I'll listen to a bunch, and but then I realize like I'll go periods where like I just start accumulating credits. And I have a lot of stuff. I'm one of these people, like, I'm horrible. Like, I'll start something. I'll get in, like, no, nope, don't like where this is going. No, nope, I have a problem with this. And I, I don't give any credibility. I'm going to stop, which is, you know, says more about my arrogance than probably what I'm listening to. Yeah, in general, yeah. there are a few. I always feel guilty when that happens. I'm not going to say it never happens. But in general, I try really hard to just hate listen to the rest of it and get through through it. And, and basically, I make a bargain with myself where it's like, all right. If you find yourself having tuned out, you're not going to back up and make sure you understood every word. That's but you're going to get through this so that you could at least know, you know, what the opinions are. I mean, yeah, but you certainly find that in politics. Like, like I listen to a lot of political stuff, and a lot of it is coming from a certain perspective, and it might be a spectrum uh, perspective that I agree with or I find the people trustworthy. But it's still important to kind of hear what their arguments are. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so I, I I'm I'm with Brian. It's like, you know, if let's just say if I fall asleep listening to it, I'm not exactly uh you know gonna uh, uh, try to figure out where I need to go back to. Yeah, I, I I I totally. If you're reading something you need to know, it's it's an opposition or different points of view. I mean, I I'm a big believer in that. You've got to read other sides of stuff to understand what you're doing. And I, I'm thinking more like, I was reading a book that was about like you know different technology companies and. You know, they started off talking about like Amazon and like and like the secret of Amazon success. And I'm like, well, that's part of it, but it's a thing we knew about. Like, oh, they had unlimited capital and they keep building, building. I'm like, yeah, but they put distribution centers near the source of product. They did. There's other really critical, clever things they did, which were why they got that you know extreme amounts of capitalization. It's, it was one of these things like, no, you you couldn't you couldn't under you couldn't really fully explain what they did by what you that person explained, and then. They get to Apple and they're like, ah, it was just this, this sort of a rant. I'm like, I can read a rant, but if you don't know why, I don't know if I want to finish the rest of the book because I don't think you understood, you know, really what worked there or why things worked. You know, and that that frustrated I mean, Like, I know that was there was a book that um, everybody loves the Sapiens. And for me, it was like, man, like this is rehashing a lot of stuff I already read elsewhere. But this this person's main thesis doesn't work for me. I don't, I don't buy it, you know, and, and I'm an out, you know, like people love that book. And I think that if somebody you read, you listen to the first part of it, you enjoy it. I'm like, finish it. But for me, I'm like, man, like I've read the sources on some of this stuff and I find it more interesting and, and their, their, their take on it doesn't, doesn't work for me. So I'm like, pass. And I'm probably missing out on something great. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, that's, that's the question is like, I'm, I'm willing to say no, like just to stop 10%, 20% of a book and move on to something else. Well, I, and it's tough because I can't even say that you're wrong uh, because I mean, obviously, obviously uh, wherever, where you're at is a pretty good place in terms of your productivity and your output and, and, and what you're hoping to get out of those books. So uh, yeah, I can't, I can't even fault you for that if it didn't work for you, but I know um, for, for me, I try really hard to uh, some examples. I guess we could talk about like what books have I quit? Um, can't seem to get myself back to reading blitz scaling because what they're pitching, uh, AKA risking everything mm -hmm. uh, is, is fairly antithetical to my responsibilities in our small business. Like um, I, because I wouldn't be just gambling with 
what I have. I'm gambling with the promises that I've made to all of our team about, you know, uh, growing the business and all that stuff. So it's, it's, it's hard for me to just, you know, listen to the stories of single 20 somethings who bravely gambled everything. Uh, and I'm like, uh, must be nice. Uh, some of us got uh, three kids. Well, and, and a team. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I don't know how deep you got into it, but they get into explaining when and when not to and where it applies at what stage a company might be. So, well, and, and I think, well, I think I jumped off when they gave me permission to there, there was a nice moment where they say, Hey, it's okay. This is not for everybody. If you have this kind of business, this kind of business, this kind of business, if you need to mm -hmm. hold on to the land that you've uh, that you've conquered so far, then blitzscaling probably isn't for you. And I was like, great. Now I'll listen mm -hmm. to Harmontown. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, and I think, and I think it's in your case where you're you're looking for what I was I was gonna say for something that directly applies to you right now. I mean, like Harmontown. Well, maybe. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but 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 there's there's a version of there could be a theoretical version of you know. Uh, Brian Bush with multimedia enterprises three years from now where let's say, you know, you're expanding, you get a capital raise and you're like, I need to hire more talent. I need to expand because I'm now become, you know, a super producer well, and, and, and I need to blitz scale. And there's also uh, what I should do. The lesson I should take away from it is remember that it's not the whole organization that needs to gamble everything, but there are speculative silos within this stuff you know as we launch new properties or whatever like hey this property is only slow growing so let's you know let's go all in and possibly end up having to cancel this one property so yeah, I, it, I know there are lessons there to be learned yeah. uh yeah. i i just need to, i i don't have anything at the front of my mind no no lens to 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 view everything through yeah, and it's and it's bandwidth. What do you, how much do you want to spend your business knowledge bandwidth on something that you say doesn't apply to you at this point? You know, and I I, I heartily agree. I I and it's it's one of these things too where you know blitz scaling is very much about like a winner takes all sort of thing, kind of a Peter Thiel sort of you know competition is for losers mentality where you know how do you grow so fast and dominate you know which is great for some businesses but other businesses it just and particularly content businesses it's a different 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 thing you know. So, you know, I, I, I understand uh, talking about, um, you know, getting off of books or, or dropping books that you find are might not be helpful or just not entertaining, whatever. Like th that's something that on like, especially on the Scam Nation side, we kind of deal with in the general of like how much how much of a video should be entertaining versus educational. Um, and I think because Brian, I, I feel like our dynamic is we're kind of we kind of have like, I think, uh you lean more towards being, you know, entertaining, and I lean towards more being educational, right? Which I think puts us in a good, a good balance. Yeah, we, we, we got a Lennon McCartney thing going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, that's something that comes up because you know, Scam Nation is is very tutorial focused. I mean, Scam School was already, you know, very much about showing people how to do stuff, and and uh, but also being entertaining, and and yeah, um, that's that's something yeah. that we deal with. But I'm sure every property has to deal with, you know, takeaways and entertaining or you know, how much meat do you have versus how much flash? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would actually be curious to hear you guys uh, uh, drill into that a little bit on, uh, as I know that Scam Nation, uh, based on the content that is coming out now, uh, you know, well, here, let me let me rewind two seconds. Sure. Scam School was Brian teaches you a trick, but also you're hanging out with Brian Brushwood. You are in the place that you would imagine having the most fun with Brian Brushwood is. Brian Brushwood's being funny and charming to the random people there and you also learn a trick and so now it is both wish fulfillment in like uh, uh this is what i will do with this trick as well as mm -hmm. teaching a very simple thing that now that i have this knowledge i'm going to be able to do because that's the conceit of the show of you uh teaching randoms right, right. whereas scam nation is hey here's how you do a thing and brian's pleasant and he's fun but it's it's not the applied element of it there, there's there's less wish fulfillment more uh of a of a uh, let's let's just show you how to do stuff now both are popular genres mm -hmm. uh but what what is what is that that uh that, that mix i i would say uh th there there are a number of reasons that um we were running out of bandwidth on scam school partly because like the bedrock stuff since day one was hand me literally any non-magician and I will do a type of trick that by the end of this seven to 15 minutes, 
they will be able to perform back to me. And so nobody can tell me that this is exposure because they're clearly learning. Nobody could tell me that it's not beginner appropriate because we're taking people who have never even maybe held a deck of cards or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. um, uh, But the issues with that are it limits us to only beginner types of magic. Correct. Uh, and on a logistical production side, it is it is uh, it takes a lot of time to find randoms or to put us in a position to be. It, it takes it's it's a lot of wrangling to go to a bar and uh, film, sure. and that yes. doesn't yeah. scale easily. And 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 for that uh, that 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 C block, you know, the A block is the pitch of like the, me doing the trick, and the trick looks awesome, and you think I want to learn that. Uh, the B block is me teaching the trick, and then the C block, which was very critically important for for scam school. Uh, was was them doing it back to me that C block is important as a prover to 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 validate the idea that this is something that you at home will learn and it's valuable in that people would make the type of mistakes that the people at home would make mm -hmm. um, but it could take 30 to 40 minutes just to get yeah. that 90 second block and that is a uh, uh, there probably will be a time that we have the resources to do that. Mm -hmm. But for right now, as we transition, uh, uh, we, we are working on, we're back to a shoestring, shoestring budget right. uh, as uh, Scam Nation is an independent property in a way that Scam School was not. So so we are taking advantage of this by sort of setting up a, um, a, a, a roughly a six month trial balloon to say like, okay, well, let's, let's not argue uh, Brian and Bryce about which is more important, the tutorial or or the fluff, uh, mm -hmm. and what the ratio should be. Let's run an experiment. And so we are thankfully in a place right now where right now uh, the theory we're operating on is let's do all meat. Let's get right to the point. Right. Let's uh, let's give something in the first 15 seconds that that pe like we there's no need for walking down the street telling people what channel they're on. They already know what channel they're on. There's no need like, yeah. like get right to the point. What am I gonna see? And uh, uh, the theory being. Maybe the episodes don't pop uh, immediately, but they're but even more evergreen compared to Scam School, which exactly are fine. But I, it's it's like looking at, you know, even if you look at some of the Scam Schools we did, uh, you know, a Three year years ago, ago, yeah, or, or even a year ago, and you compare it to the way Scam School was shot, you know, almost ten years ago, it was still a completely different show. And so over time, what's happened is that format reduced itself, and so because we had sort of this transitional point. Uh, at least part one, you know, one of my objectives is to see what, how far can we reduce that, that element if this is already the trend in the long term. Right. And uh, along with that, there comes some conventions that we were locked into with Scam School because sure. Scam School was targeted at non magicians. That meant they didn't care that the move is called the zero shuffle. They didn't care that it's called the size step and stack or whatever. And in fact, if you called things by their proper name, it reduced you the probability every, that anybody yeah. would click on them. And so uh, okay. every single title was like amazing card trick blows their minds. And it, again, that's <laughs> that's more likely to get a click. It's less helpful to young magicians who are serious about the craft and need to access a quick tutorial to mm -hmm. learn X, Y and Z. So so for this six months uh, in Scam Nation, we're really trying to focus on creating a healthy library of content where everything gets to the point and hopefully it's still fun and personable, but but right. but also equally uh, possibly more important is that there's a clarity because one of the benefits, and we've talked about this on After Things, is play to your strengths. Figure out what you have to offer that nobody else has. And in the world of magic, nobody can match our production capabilities. Our, our production capabilities are slick and polished mm -hmm. and straight to the point. Uh, every other tutorial is a pair of hands, or you could go like uh, you know Chris Ramsey has taught uh, a lot of stuff, but 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 his is is more on the fluff side of things, uh, more on Maybe. traditional YouTuber. Sure. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna spend ten thousand dollars in a magic shop. Like you're yeah. not gonna walk away knowing a new uh, move from that, and that's fine. It's it's uh, we're we're figuring out how to be Coke to uh, Chris Ramsey's Pepsi, and um, yeah. and and this is this is what we're doing there now. Eventually. The plan is, and we. This is the other agonizing thing: is you, you know, you go to war with the army you have, not the one you want to have. Uh, the l part of the reason we're building out the property is so that there is a place for us to constantly be having top of the line guests who come in for three to five days at a time, and let and and we do collaborations with something that won't cost me. Uh, twelve hundred dollars for hotels. Something that I don't have to. You know, there's there. There'll be food and drinks, and everything will be catered. And, you know, and they could bring their spouse and all that stuff. 
Um, but also like a controlled shooting space. Exactly. Versus. So we can get straight to the point. We don't right. have to book chaotic venues. It, it, it will. Everything will be much more efficient. So efficient, hopefully, that we're able to release content three or four times a week featuring and, all yeah. these performers at the top of their game. But we can't get there because they, they don't have a place to poop yet. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like so and, for and so That's now, like the other big objective, right? Like talking about reducing the format to being, uh, you know, straight to the point, but also we've seen with modern rogue and we've seen over the years with scam school that the more active a channel is the more popular it tends to be correct and so because there's been this transition because various things you know our output has been reduced on scam nation compared to where it was 12 months ago but by hopefully trimming down what a video looks like having different types of formats you know like we did this one video about uh, this scientific uh, experiment video with just it, it was just you re relaying, you know, this experiment that that was uh, that an, a previous scam school episode was was uh, taking place that that really doesn't have much of a format, a fit in the scam school format, quote unquote. Oh, no, it, it was undoable in the scam school format because right. it didn't have an A block, a B block, a C block. It didn't have up to two. I mean, this is the other thing is people are like. Uh, there was a small contingency of people who are like, didn't you teach this like nine years ago? I'm like, yes. Yeah. It's in a Thanks six, for watching. <laughs> it's in a 16 minute long video surrounded by an ad for Gamefly mm -hmm. and the fact that Netflix will send you DVDs by mail and yeah. uh, nobody will watch that. Uh, yeah. Instead, we're doing a four minute version that gets straight to the point and delivers to you the important stuff and it allows us to do community to do to do community sort of stuff like we, we've we've done some of these mailbag type videos answering like letters and stuff and and i think that's a part of this scaling up is like opening so, up the format and opening up the type of thing that we put out yeah and i think that there was there was a a necessity in kind of declaring bankruptcy on uh, uh that channel a little bit in terms of like saying we are we aren't just scam school so like you uh, we have to kind of take scam school away to for a lot of reasons and here is what replaces it and we will continue to grow and evolve it. I guess my one question would be though uh you did launch another property in Modern Rogue from the scam school channel and that to me gets into some of more of the the like wish fulfillment of like Brian Brushwood is this cool guy who goes to bars and is like the most confident person in the in the world and does magic for randoms, right? Uh, now, Modern Rogue is a different kind of wish fulfillment in, hey, uh, what if I had infinite money and cool friends uh, that gets into that same core demo, but do you ever want to bring some of that element that did, I, I view as a, as a viewer, was kind of a splitting off of like Scam Nation now has a lot of the knowledge stuff and... Modern Rogue, although you do learn things there, is a lot more of the horsing around, like, mm -hmm. isn't it cool to have this life kind of stuff. Do you, uh, uh, is, is part of that, do, do you ever see Scam Nation having some of uh, that, like, hey, like, wish fulfillment cool stuff again? Or is, is it evolving in a different direction? Uh, that's a really good question. I suppose that will depend entirely on the amount of guest talent that we're able to accrue. Uh, on Scam Nation. Scam Nation, I would love it if... Um, it seems like any aspirational element of Scam Nation would be very guest-heavy. Uh, correct. And so that, 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 that's where it would come from. That's, it would that's come my from, like, guess. look at these cool... Now we're just in a position where we can capture the slice of life of an awesome rad magician who is like you want to be nine-year-old who's watching this because they are obsessed with card magic. Yeah, I want, I want to stop. I mean, I spent, I spent 10 years on Scam School loudly shouting how great I am, and now I want to hear how great other people are. And I want to be, I want to be, I want to be Jimmy Fallon, not a guest on Jimmy Fallon, you know? And uh, a really good, I mean, if you want to uh, distill it, um, here's a thing that nobody's doing that hopefully I'll be first at is uh, Penn & Teller's Fool Us on YouTube. That's that's where I want to be, uh, where where it's it's a great showcase. You have seasoned professionals with time tested material. Imagine I, I'll just spill the beans on this. Uh, imagine Penn and Teller's Fool Us, where you do the trick and then you think about like how it's similar to something you did or didn't see before. Imagine Penn and Teller's Fool Us. Only the third act is, OK, now walk us through the entire thing and teach it to us. Uh, that is something that you cannot do on on the CW. 
partly because it's a broadcast medium and it would create a whole bunch of problems and people would would uh, fear but uh, you know uh, losing something by coming on the show but you can do on uh, scam nation because it is a community where everybody has to subscribe and and come in and and they'll be praised and 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 get rockstar status and drive sales of their dvds or get them booked or whatever i i, I want it to be a uh, i want it to be the place that all of magic's bests and brightest come to uh to share their stuff so that that that, that does seem like you uh, guys are driving more in the i'm already interested in magic audience uh, that, that he... yes and no because what we can't do right now i mean i guess we can but uh what we could not do on scam school was have somebody come on like let's say tom mullico was still around we couldn't just come on and perform his cigarette eating routine for us and then that's the episode everybody would howl and lose their mind they're like i come to scam school to learn stuff or whatever learn. but but scam nation that'd be a fine showcase and it'd be something they'd be proud and that's something everybody would be thrilled to share with everybody else we could do just a performance and that's it and yeah. it's that flexibility that i yeah especially if we're doing you know uh, two to four posts per week that never could have happened under scam school and and i'm super thrilled that that eventually but, we'll get to that yeah. place yeah where, where you guys are going is 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 interesting but i i, I do i am uh i think what what's fascinating about where you guys are going just as a whole is that there is a lot of kind of a uh, uh, explosion of the like uh, uh, DNA that in, in many ways was started between your stage show and scam school. Like that's where the, the, the Brian Brushwood DNA kind of begins there and has been exploding and growing and changing, but now is at its, its biggest point of uh, 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 expansion, like uh, uh, it be, and becoming more intense. So, uh, I think it makes all, it makes all the sense in the world for Scam School to be something that is performance focused and tutorial focused, and you know if you really like Brian Brushwood being a cool bro that you want to imagine as your as your best friend, there are a couple other places where that happens. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Why well, I... imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, he is everybody's best bro, right? Uh, of course. Yeah. I love everybody great, right? except for Gillette. Oh. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah! You got into a you got into a fight with oh, Gillette. Uh, I don't know. Fight, Not fight, Penn Gillette. Fight implies that I actually care. Um, well, uh, you tweeted enough about it. Well, I don't know. I thought I thought you were half joking, and then I saw Bonnie's post on Facebook where she did, did seemed like the opposite of joking. Oh like, no no no! Was, yeah, well, I I went down I went downstairs and I was like, yep. So anyway, I poked a horn in nets. Uh, I'm gonna go to the gym. Bye. <laughs> and didn't care. Um, uh, it is interesting, though. Uh, I, I don't so know. Pa it, part of me wanted to make this a night attack thing just to ask uh, the question of whether or not it's uh, uh, a coincidence or not. Because because the only people so set this up. If, if set this up if people don't I am, know. I'm glad Bryce is. said not Pendulette because at first I'm like, oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're just talking <laughs> about it. I got back on this one. I'm not comfortable about this. So but... Gillette, the, uh, the 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 home the the home and body solution company has a new brand and. This advertisement, I guess, that they have on Target, the tagline is classically groomed, modernly rogue. Modern, rogue uh. Right. And so basically, uh, look, some ad copywriter somewhere wrote this uh, and and everybody. Uh, so what are your moves? Uh, first of all, oh, modernly rogue. How common a phrase is that? Do a quick Google shoot, search for the words for the phrase modernly rogue. You'll come up with zero, zero times. Has anybody searched for those? If you search uh, uh, modern rogue, you'll see that that there was nothing uh, up until like, uh, uh, I don't know, 2006 to 2012, where it was only casually mentioned if somebody was saying, hey, what's a modern rogue deck for me to play on uh, Magic the Gathering? Uh, and then our show came out and all of a sudden uh, that's what everybody's searching for, right? So uh, truthfully, I would just assume this is some copywriter who heard the phrase modern rogue, didn't remember where from, thought it would sound good, although it's really awkwardly put on there. So... Uh, well, what do you do on that? Like, it's it's clearly inspired by, you know, your brand or your name. Uh, the odds of that being a random thing that somebody would say, like, that's not even a phrase. It's not, it's it's a nonsense thing. Uh, either way, even if it is a coincidence, things I want, uh, not for people to think of Modern Rogue as that weird-ass dumb phrase 
that Gillette uses on their hair care products. Uh, tools I have to do that. Uh, not lawyers, because that's dumb, and I'd have to prove that I was damaged and I've not been damaged. Uh, the things I can do, point out. This is a dumb phrase, and I want you to really associate pain every time you think about using it. And, uh, and so I, I shouted about it on Twitter. It was fun. You know, I, or, uh, you know, product activation, you know. <laughs> product could, activation? What do you mean? You know, uh, there's a very popular YouTube channel called The Modern Rogue. I mean, oh, they're trying well, and, to and that's the other thing. Modernly is, rogue. Well, now know. one of the host's Twitter accounts uh, has told everyone about this hot new Gillette brand. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I, it's a win-win. It's a collaboration <laughs> between the two of us. Hot collab. <laughs> I just would be like, not Barbra Streisand it. Uh, why? Why not? Definitely Barbra Streisand it. I mean, it's not going to even uh, be noticeable on their balance sheet. And meanwhile, me shouting about it is going to get a lot of people to say, what's this about? Oh, Brian has a show called Modern Rogue. I'm the one who wins in, in this. And, uh, uh, and they're the ones who look like uh, asshats. Okay, let's go to picks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I I don't I I you're I it's a different game than I understand. So I I don't I don't know. I don't I don't picks picks. <laughs> I have a, I have an after things pick. Uh, yeah. I talked about this uh man a few probably a month or so ago when they announced that it was coming back and it came back and it's the Netflix uh show The OA. Uh, man, oh boy. Uh, so the first season is super weird because it's about a girl who comes back after seven years and she disappeared when she was young and she was blind and now she's grown up and she's not blind anymore. And so it's a lot of like telling the story of like what happened and the people that she meets when she's back. Season two is like a completely different show and it's really good for it D does it have the same actor the same cast yeah yeah okay. yeah the, the pretty much the whole original cast is there plus a bunch of new people um in, in fact the only thing i think is is a, a a a the big negative point on season two is that there's kind of too much going on and it's it's fine all the things that happen but y you feel like you kind of didn't go anywhere at, by the end of it um but uh a a story about an angel hopping between dimensions because she's using uh, yoga cheat codes to hop into a different world is 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 enough. That's that's very good. I don't I I don't know how to so describe should, it. Because should it's should you skip the first no season? No, watch them both. Okay, watch, watch them both. But uh, I just I never know how to talk about this show because it's insane. There's, it's I, I this I I did not watch Lost, but I think this is probably what people felt like when ah, they were watching Lost. Right on. Because it's 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 crazy. It's crazy. Um, so that's uh, the OA. Cool. Uh, my my pick. I don't have a creative pick right now, but I do have uh, uh, the continued desire to keep watching Shit's Creek. Ooh. I saw this episode last night where Catherine O'Hara uh, is running for city council yeah. and she uh, 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 can't find, she assumes that there's going to be a scandal because she took nude photos in the 70s uh, and then is upset that nobody on the internet has posted her nude photos from the 70s. <laughs> uh, it's very funny. Catherine O'Hara is hilarious. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Uh I got a pick. I uh, probably already said it before, but I finally finished season three of True Detective. Holy oh. cow, does that show stick the landing in a deeply satisfying way? Have you guys seen season three yet? Um, I'm, I'm halfway through. I, I'm, 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 I got. I know I'm getting harumphed over here because I've been supposed to finish and I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> I want to. I want to. I can't wait. All right. I believe you, Brian. Great pick. I'll, I'll go to mine now because I'm so afraid of spoilers. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I'm outside the window of I should have watched it by now. And I, I oh I, no no no! I mean I only finished it a few days ago. Uh, yeah. But uh, uh, spoiler alert! I loved it. Ha ha! Now cool. you're spoiled. I'm hearing no! great things. <laughs> um, my pick. Uh, this is my kind of. I, I keep saying this again. So I've been working on a little app, an iOS app, and I'm like, hey, uh, man, 
it's been a while since I did anything in iOS um, and I forgot everything. So let me go do a tutorial and let me go to Udemy and pay tw 12 bucks. And some of the tutorials are not quite up to date. And this was a case one of them I did, but there are other ones that are. But anyway, it was still well enough to get me back into, okay, now I feel comfortable doing, you know, UI views and all this sort of stuff and know how to figure out what I'm doing. And so I'm just a big believer, you know, back to the original topic of learning things of like, go, go, you know, I had a friend that's like, Hey, I want to do put together some like uh, documents for my business. I'm like, well, you know, use like InDesign. He's like, I, I don't, I don't know anybody who knows how to use it. I'm like, you know, you can spend, you know, do a, do a five hour course on it, you know? And to some people like, Oh, five hours. I don't know if I mean, like five hours for a skill that will be with you for the rest of your life. That's a no brainer. You know, like you can, you can start, you can make an app. You can learn how to make an app in four hours. You know, it won't necessarily be great, but the mystery of it will be solved for you. And so I'm just a big believer in like, learn these tools, learn these tools that are all around you. So, yeah, you know, Udemy is a great way to do that. YouTube too. Fair Those cool. are my picks. Yeah. yeah. Groovy. All right. It's been after. Cool, yeah. Hey. Oh, man, it's 4.30. 4.30. I guess yeah, two, that's two, the expected 24. time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I got to bounce. I got to eat. I yeah. love you guys. We got to yeah. get ready for Core Killers. Thank you, everybody, for coming in and watching. We'll uh, be back. Can I talk to you for uh, two minutes, Brian, offline? Yeah, sure thing. Sure. Thanks. Uh, we'll be back for Core Killers. Justin's going to have a stream a little bit later. He just logged off. And, uh, yeah, see you guys later. Bye. Love you. Make it back to me. The changing time has pushed me back to